number 16 of the National Football League. It's a day of if. There are so many things that can happen as far as teams still trying to get into the playoffs, but let us centralize ourselves on the Tampa Bay situation. If Tampa Bay defeats Kansas City or Chicago loses to St. Louis, the Buccaneers will win the Central Division title. If Tampa Bay and Chicago finished tied, the Buccaneers would win the division title on the basis of a better division record, 6-2 and two to 5-3 and three for Chicago. That's basically the situation. Right now, let's go to Tampa Bay. Good afternoon, everybody. Mark Champion, Dave Kasturik with you. It is a rainy afternoon at Tampa Stadium. The Buccaneers kicking off Neil O'Donoghue. The deep man is Johnny Durden. He comes up for it at the gate-yard line, takes it there to the 10, 15, tries to get outside, 20, break free, 25, 30, and up near the 35-yard line, Neil O'Donoghue over there to force him down along with Billy Cesar. So a pretty good return that time by Johnny Durden. And Kansas City on offense with Steve Fuller, the rookie out of Clemson, a number one draft choice at quarterback, Ted McKnight and Earl Gant are the running backs. Gant starting over Mike Williams, another rookie. The wide receivers are Henry Marshall and uh, J.T. Smith, the tight end, Tony Samuels, Charlie Getty, Rod Walters, Jack Rudney, Tom Condon, and Bob Simmons make up the offensive line. First and 10, 35-yard line, as the Chiefs move from right to left here at Tampa Stadium. Steve Fuller, the rookie, hands off, goes inside, and the tackle made just across the 38-yard line. Earl Gant, Dewey Selman on the uh, stop that time, brings up a second down. And the crowd seems to be a bit uh, fired up, Dave. Oh, that's true, Mark. There's so much on this football game, and everybody's been talking about the crowd, and uh, I'm sure everybody senses it. I know the, everybody in this booth is, is very, very excited. I think we're gonna, the rain's going to hamper what could be a championship game, but uh, I think that everybody's going to have to make the best of it. Wide receivers to either side on second down and seven. Gant and McKnight are split behind Fuller. He fumbles the ball, picks it up, and is tackled immediately after a pickup maybe of a half a yard. Wally Chambers wrapping his arms around Steve Fuller, and we're going to see that happen today. I talked to Frankie Papello before the game. He says they're going to use rosin. Rosin well, is the answer. Pickham doesn't really work when things get wet, and it's, it's, you, you pick up a lot of junk and things, and it's very difficult. So I think you're going to see a lot more conservative game from both sides. When it starts to rain, the ball gets a little bit slippery. You, you've got to go with a little more muscle, a little less finesse. However, Doug Williams has a, a tendency to throw rather well in rain and wet conditions, and uh, maybe he'll be able to be on target today. Marshall over the left side, J.T. Uh, J. Smith on the right side now on third and seven. In motion, McKnight dropping back is Fuller to pass. Penalty flags are down out of the backfield and incomplete. Mark, I hate to say, I think Wally Chambers might have charged offside from his left defensive end spot a little bit early, and uh, I think he's going to get another shot. They're going to take the penalty and get another shot. Earl Gant, the intended receiver that time, went off his No, hand. no, it was motion, Kansas City. So the Buccaneers will get the football after the punt. Coming up now by the National Football League leading punter, Bob Grupp. You know, interesting thing about Grupp, he's a free agent. He had a couple tryouts with the Jets. He also tried out in Canada, and uh, it's interesting. He's averaging 43.7, and he's kicked uh, extremely well. Well, they took the penalty. Well, now, wait a minute. Now they've decided to... The ball was dead prior to the snap. All right, the ball was dead. Jerry Seaman, the referee, uh, fooled everybody because they had changed over, and the whistle had blown, apparently. So now it will be a third down and a little more than 11 yards. The ball marked back at about the 33-yard line. 13-27, first quarter, rainy afternoon. No score, Kansas City and Tampa Bay. Wide receivers to either side. Again, McKnight and Gant forward to pass on third and long. Out of the backfield, McKnight at the 30, 35. And Randy Crowder has him out of bounds at about the 37-yard line. And it brings up fourth down. Very aggressive defense that time. The entire left side, as we've seen so often, Mark, during the season. The cornerback, Jarrett White, coming up. Linebacker, Wally Chambers, Randy Crowder from his nose. All, all of them converging over there and limiting to a four- or five-yard gate, bringing up the punting situation. We might tell you defensively for the Buccaneers, Danny Reese is starting at right cornerback in place of Mike Washington. He suffered a shoulder injury last week. It's not known how much or if at all that Mike can play. Bob Grupp gets the snap. Good charge put on. Grupp gets it away. It's a low kick. Danny Reese will let it bounce. Picks it at the 25 and it's hit immediately at the 26-yard line. That's where the Buccaneers take over. The tackle made by J.T. Smith. 
So with 13-10 remaining here in the first quarter, Tampa Bay nothing, Kansas City nothing, and the fans are really getting fired up now after the 37-yard punt. Doug Williams at quarterback, Ricky Bell, Johnny Davis in the backfield, Larry Mucker and Ike Hagan, the wide receivers, Jimmy Giles at tight end, Dave Revis and Greg Wharton on the left side, Steve Wilson in the center, Greg Roberts and Darrell Carlton on the right side. Defensively, we'll get to Kansas City just a minute. One of the big matchups, Mark, is the right tackle, Darrell Carlton, against Art Still, their, their premier defensive left end. They open with two tight ends. Obradovich is in there. The lone wide receiver is Mucker. Backs are split. Handoff goes to Ricky Bell, and he cannot find much at all. Right up the middle, Art Still, the number one draft choice in 78 out of Kentucky, makes the tackle. He is at left defensive end. Don Parrish is in the middle, and Sylvester Hicks on the right side. The linebackers are Calvin Peterson, the former Buccaneer, starting over the injured Whitney Paul. Frank Manumaliuna is on the inside left side. Gary Spanning on the right side. And Tom Howard is the right side linebacker. Gary Green, ML Carter are the corners. Gary Barbaro. And we're going to check to see if Herb Christopher is starting at strong safety because he was slightly injured as well. Second down nine for the 27. Again, Ricky Bell the handoff. Tries to swing it out. Finds room off to the right side and gets just near the 30-yard line where Christopher made the tackle. So indeed he is in the lineup. 22 remaining in the first quarter, no score. You're likely to see a lot of uh, running plays here this afternoon because the ball is wet. The field is tremendous because it soaks up that rain very, very well. Good drainage system here, but uh, the ball is wet. Yeah, the ball's wet, Mark. The field should be excellent. Uh, just The rain just started uh, just prior to game time, and it hasn't really been heavy, so I don't see any problems. I think the ball being wet is the big factor. Third down and six, the ball just across the 30-yard line here at Tampa Stadium. In the slot right is Ricky Bell. In motion goes Larry Mucker to the left side. Doug Williams to pass on third down and six. He's looking long. And slipping is Ike Higgins, and the ball goes out of bounds at about the 20-yard line. It was well overthrown anyway. Ike slipped along the sideline. It wouldn't have been good had he caught it because he went out of bounds. Uh, the official on the spot dropped his head, indicating that he had gone out of bounds. When he made the cut, he slipped. It carried him out of bounds. You can't go from out of bounds to inbounds and still make the play. And so it would have been incomplete even if he hung on the ball, bringing up a punting situation. J.T. Smith, the deep man, he has returned 56 punts this year, an average of 10.7. He is the speedster. Two touchdowns, I might add, Mark, one of which went 88 yards, I believe, against the Oakland Raiders. Tom Blanchard standing back, awaiting the snap from Dana Massiger. It is a good one, and he's going to have to hurry. Gets it away. It's a fast punt, line drive right to J.T. Smith at the 35, up to the 40, and he tackled at about the 43-yard line. Billy Cesar was in there initially. And Jim Obradovich also on the stop. 34-yard punt, an 8-yard return. So with the score, Tampa Bay nothing, Kansas City nothing. We'll be back. We'll take a look at the schedule in the National Football League, and then we'll, as briefly as we possibly can, and as clearly as we possibly can, try to explain to you the various possibilities for playoff teams. This is something much better read than said, but we'll try to clear it up for you a bit. First of all, on Saturday... The New York Jets over Miami, 27 to 24. Doesn't make any difference as far as Miami is concerned because they've already clinched the division title and no other team from that division can qualify, so no problem. The Jets, 27 to 24 over Miami. Green Bay and Detroit both well out of it. Green Bay winning Saturday, 18 to 13 at the Silverdome. Now, in progress right now, Buffalo is at Pittsburgh. Kansas City at Tampa Bay, that's the game you're listening to right now. Cleveland is at Cincinnati, Minnesota at New England, Baltimore at the New York Giants, and San Francisco at Atlanta. All of those games are in progress. A little later, Philadelphia at Houston and St. Louis at Chicago. Then later, Washington at Dallas. That game will be heard later. New Orleans is at Los Angeles, Seattle at Oakland, and then Monday, Denver at San Diego. We want to mention to you, we'll have updates throughout the afternoon on the Chicago-St. Louis game at Soldier Field, where it is 19 degrees. And that game gets underway at 2 o'clock. The wind chill factor is minus 9 degrees. <laughs> That's a lot of fun. This is, this is no picnic playing in this stuff, but I'd rather play in a little wet at about 65 or 70 degrees than a wind chill factor of minus 9 and overcast in Chicago. That's an hour starting, at least starts an hour after this kickoff. J.T. Smith to the left side, and Henry Marshall splits right on first down at 10 Kansas City from the 44-yard line. Fake. Steve Fuller dropping back to pass. Gets one out. Open. Complete to Marshall. And he's going to be brought down at about the 48-yard line by Cecil Johnson. Good, strong tackle by the right side linebacker, Henry Marshall. So it brings up a second down and about five, six yards to go. It 
It is second and six. Kansas City 48 yard line. 11 minutes to go. First quarter. No score. Tampa Bay and Kansas City. T. Fuller brings him up. Gant and McKnight in the backfield. They are split. Hand off McKnight off the left side. Tries to swing it out. And can't. He's brought down a lot. Big play. Richard Wood on the tackle, but Cecil Johnson made the play. He turned it in, and Richard Wood made the tackle. Lost back to the 45. Again, very fine uh, outside support. The corner, Danny Reese coming up. Also, Cedric Brown from his free safety spot. Stringing that play out along with Cecil Johnson. And what happens when you string it out? You allow the, the big people, your, your good tacklers, uh, an opportunity to come on in from the inside. And they threw that one for a five-yard loss, bringing up a third and nine. The Chiefs go with three wide receivers as Stan Rome, another Clemson rookie at 11th round draft choice, comes in. So they have three wide receivers on third and nine from the 45-yard line. Steve Fuller dropping deep. The pass. Good pressure. The pass is incomplete. And a fly drop. Dewey Selman put a strong hit on the intended receiver that time, Ted McKnight. I think they're going to call a hold, Mark. It looks like the flag was deep in the Kansas City where the pocket was based, and I think it's going to be a holding against Kansas City, correct? So they'll decline the penalty. It is fourth down. The head linesman was the one that threw that flag, and he threw it in the direction of the pocket. Holy! Your attention, please. Walter Markert. The referee is Jerry Seaman. Uh, Frank Sikovitz is the umpire. Headlinesman is Joe Mays, who made the call. Bob McElwee is the line judge. Al Jury, the back judge. Side judge, Bob Rice. Field judge, Bill O'Brien. And Danny Reese is the man to receive the punt from Grupp. Danny back at his 10. Snap. Grupp gets it away. It's a wobbler again. Danny lets it drop at the 25. He's going to get away from it. And it's going to take a Buccaneer bounce and go out of bounds at the 22-yard line. And that is where Tampa Bay takes over. Touched by Dave Rosemack. A 33-yard punt by the NFL's leading punter. First and 10, Tampa Bay with the score. The Bucs nothing, Kansas City nothing. Reviewing the situation for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. Now, if Can Tampa Bay defeats Kansas City or Chicago loses to St. Louis, the Buccaneers will win the division title. If Tampa Bay and Chicago finish tied, the Buccaneers would win the division title on the basis of a better divisional record. They'll be 6-2, and two, and uh, Chicago will be 5-3. and three. Now, Chicago will be at home against St. Louis, but that game will not be getting underway for about 45 minutes. So if you have heard about scoreboard watching in baseball, I got news for you. They're going to be taking a close look at the scoreboard in Chicago to see the progress of this game between Kansas City and Tampa Bay. If Chicago wins and Tampa Bay loses, the Bears will win the division title on an overall record 10-6 to six to 9-7. Uh, and seven. Tampa Stadium on this Sunday afternoon, a very, very important Sunday for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. We have 9 minutes and 55 seconds remaining in the first quarter, no score. Tampa Bay and Kansas City. The rain has kind of neutralized things offensively for both teams. And Dave, you noticed that uh, they're putting a lot of pressure on Grupp, the punter. Well, there's a lot of pressure going both ways. Uh, a lot of pressure on Mike, on, uh, excuse me, on Tom Blanchard. I want to keep calling him Mike Blanchard, a uh, tennis official named Mike Blanchard's an old friend. But anyway, they're putting a lot of pressure on Blanchard as well. But Grupp has got a lot of heat from the inside on, by the Bucks uh, punt rush team and uh, hasn't been very effective. It is first and ten. Two tight end offense now for John McKay's Buccaneers. The backs are split behind Doug Williams and first and ten in motion Larry Mucker. And off Ricky Bell, 25, quick three to the 29-yard line. And the tackle made that time by Tom Howard, the right linebacker. Good first down pickup that time by Ricky, who's going for 1,200 yards. Uh, he said that was his goal after reaching 1,000. And he needed, I believe, 74 yards to reach the 1,200 mark. Well, he's got 11 and three carries, Mark. He's well on his way, and he's carried every, every ball, uh, every play that they've run. Dug through one pass incomplete. The Buccaneers go to two tight ends, two wide receivers, a different style of alignment. Jim Obradovich actually flanks out as a wide receiver on this play on second and three, and he is in motion to the left side. Pitch back to Ricky Bell. Bell looking for room. He's not going to find it. Herb Christopher turned that play in and made the tackle. Obradovich went in motion to the left side, and the pitch went right to Ricky, and uh, right there was Herb Christopher. Well, he, he came in motion, and he cracked extremely well. He, he came in motion and got a fine block on Cal Peterson, the linebacker. Jimmy Giles with an excellent block on Art Still. However, uh, 
And Christopher came in with Obradovich, and he was in excellent position for the for the support play. So it is third down and three now. The ball at the Tampa Bay 29-yard line. Jerry Eckwood comes in the game and replaces Jim Obradovich. So it is Eckwood and Bell in the backfield. Actually, Jerry is in a wing to the left side. Going in motion is Larry Mucker to the right. Doug Williams, draw play, Ricky Bell, 30, 35, up to the 40-yard line, first down, Buccaneers, Tom Howard on the tackle. But not until Ricky Bell picked up a good 13 yards and a Tampa Bay first down, with 8.16 remaining in the first quarter. Excellent call, the draw play. Oh, well, we got some good blocks up front. Uh, Steve Wilson primarily, Greg Horton on the left off center and left offensive guard with fine blocks. Dave Revis simply kicking out, making it look like a pass-type action, and, and he was able to move Mike Bell out of there. Mike Higgins to the left side, and Morris Owens is now the flanker right. The backfield still, Bell and Jerry Eckworth there in an eye on first down 10. And off Ricky Bell, 45. Bell to the 49-yard line, and again, the tackle by Don Perry, the nose tackle. Big burst of about eight yards for Ricky Bell. Right up the middle. Pickup of seven that time. Brings up a second down and a little over uh, two. About well, three you yards. said eight, and uh, statistician Provenzano said seven, and I say seven and a half, so <laughs> we don't go by halves in this business. The scoreboard doesn't know how to do it, so they're going to call it second and two. <laughs> Larry Mucker in at flanker, replacing Owen. Wide receivers to either side. 7-12 remaining. First quarter, no score, but the Bucks are driving. They have it at their own 49-yard line. Jerry Eck with the call. Midfield, break free, 45. Eckwood to the 40, 35. And a first down for the Buccaneers. Jerry Eckwood in El Frenner. The quarterback made the stop, but not until Jerry Eckwood had picked up 18 yards. And he's been playing very well the last couple of weeks, Dave. Well, he, he, you know, the kind of almost forgot that this guy was one of the leading rushers in the, in the league. He still has uh, 625 yards going into today's game, and he really hadn't done a lot. He caught some passes last week in San Francisco, and I think that crack in his wrist, uh, he's quite fractured in the bone, uh, hampered him quite a bit, but, you know, he's very explosive and adds an additional dimension they've been lacking. First and 10, Kansas City 34-yard line. Wide receivers, Mucker and Hagen to either side. Johnny Davis in replacing Jerry Eckwood. Hand off Ricky Bell. Inside to the 30, 25. Ricky Bell to the 20-yard line. Another first down. Jerry Barbaro, the free safety on the stop. But not until Bell picks up 15 yards on that play. Down to the Kansas City 19-yard line. 6.04 remaining first quarter. No score. Eckwood back in now, replacing Johnny Davis. So Ricky will shift to the fullback spot unless, well, now uh, Johnny comes back on the field and Ricky Bell's going to get a breather. And he'll get a good hand from this crowd as he comes off the field. How about it for Ricky Bell? Mike Hagan splits left. And Larry Mucker to the right side now. Backs in an eye on first and 10 for the 19. Pitch back. Eckwood to the 20 down to the 16-yard line, and he lost his footing. He gets back up, thought he didn't get touched, but Calvin Peterson, the former Buccaneer, kind of took his feet from out from underneath him. So they mark it down at about the 16-yard line. Second down six, pick up a four that time. Eckwood comes along the sidelines now. It will be Ricky Bell and Johnny Davis. Bell with 45 yards and seven carries. Wide receivers to either side. Ball at the Kansas City 16-yard line, 4.58 remaining in the first quarter. Good ground on offense. Ricky Bell is hit right about the line of scrimmage by Don Parrish, the nose tackle out of Pittsburgh. He was a free agent dropped by the Atlanta Falcons. Defensively on the line, the... Uh, Kansas City Chiefs have an excellent defensive front three, anchored by Art Still and Mike Bell, who uh, is the big guy, a rookie out of Colorado State, a number one draft choice. We'll see some action. Number well, 99. Both, both, uh, both defensive ends, Bell number 99 and Art Still number 67, were number one picks the last two years. It is now third and five from the Kansas City 15-yard line. Jimmy Giles lines up as a wide receiver to the right side. Doug Williams to pass. And it is ruled to Obradovich incomplete. Kind of skipped up to him that time. Jim Obradovich, the ball was thrown low. And now on comes Neil O'Donoghue to attempt the field goal. 
And this will be a 32-yard field goal attempt. Tom Blanchard to do the holding. Incidentally, Steve Wilson is snapping uh, in place of injured Charlie Hanna on the field goal attempt. Uh, talked to Neil, and uh, the last time uh, with the extra point against San Francisco was a little bit low. Blanchard, with a good hold, was able to get it down, and, and they were able to convert on the extra point. So, fourth down and five. Neil O'Donoghue to attempt a 32-yard field goal to give the Buccaneers the early lead with 4-11 remaining. Steve Wilson. The snap is bottled right through Blanchard's hand. O'Donoghue breaks away, and he's running to the 25. Blanchard is looking for the first down marker, but he'll not even get close. So the snap went right through Tom Blanchard's hand. The ball may have been wet. It's hard to say. So the Buccaneers come away empty-handed. Mark, it wasn't a, a real bad snap. It was hard to tell. Tom had his hands on it, and uh, again, it's a very, very wet ball. Ball is a little bit far, a little bit to the side, and Blanchard was unable to hold it. So with the score, Tampa Bay nothing, Kansas City nothing. We'll be back on the Buccaneer Radio Network. As far as that National Conference Central race is concerned, and we explained to you the various possibilities, see one more. If Chicago doesn't win the division title and finishes tied with Washington for the remaining wild card berth, the tie would be broken on the basis of best net points in all games. The Redskins would have a plus 54 net, and the Bears a plus 21 net points. So Tampa Bay needs to beat Kansas City and hopes that Chicago, or that Chicago needs to lose to St. Louis. If Tampa Bay wins this game, well, then the Buccaneers can rest easy for the rest of the afternoon because it doesn't make uh, too much difference. However, if Tampa Bay should lose and Chicago loses, well, then the Bucs are in pretty good shape. The NFC West has already been uh, clinched by Los Angeles. They've done it for a record NFL seventh straight time. No other teams from the NFC West can qualify. It'll take us probably the rest of the first quarter of this football game to explain the situation in the NFC East. We'll be carrying the uh, Dallas-Washington game later. We'll get to that one at that time. So Kansas City takes over. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. Wally Chambers, Randy Crowder, and Leroy Selman on the defensive line for the Buccaneers. David Lewis, Dewey Selman, Richard Wood, and Cecil Johnson are the linebackers. Jarris White and Danny Reese are the cornerbacks. Cedric Brown, Mark Cotney, the safeties. That is the defensive alignment for the Buccaneers. Again, Reese replacing the injured Mike Washington, who uh, suffered a shoulder injury against San Francisco. 4 9 remaining in the first quarter. No score. The Buccaneers, a very impressive drive on the ground, but it stalled, and the field goal attempt went uh, awry as the ball was uh, not handled by the holder, Tom Blanchard. First and 10 for Kansas City. Handoff goes. Gant across the 20, up near the 24-yard line. Pickup of about four yards that time. Brings up second down and six. We might make note, Mark, that they had the ball for over seven minutes on that drive, and it really doesn't mean a lot because they didn't get any score, but at least it gives them some confidence that they know they can move the ball against a very solid defensive team. In, in a couple of games, it don't mean a heck of a lot. Baltimore cold seven to nothing over the New York Giants in the first period. Atlanta three to nothing over San Francisco. We'll keep you abreast of the Chicago game. We will cut in periodically, and that's an hour later start to this game. Henry Marshall to the left side. J.T. Smith flanked right on second down and six down for Kansas City. And off Gant, he's got room across the 30. David Lewis chasing him down and makes the tackle, and a penalty flag drops. David Lewis made the tackle at the 37-yard line and then a late penalty flag drop. Don't be surprised if somebody might have grabbed the face mask. The referee, Jerry Seaman, will make oh. the call. It's going to go against Kansas City. We're going to get a personal foul clipping against Kansas City, I think. The wide receiver came back and, uh, and clipped David Lewis. He was trying to throw a block that time, I think. And that will mark off uh, big yardage, 15. And it moves it all the way back just about to the line of scrimmage, the original line of scrimmage, just short of the 20-yard line. And we hear Jerry Seaman now with the call. Personal foul. Clipping. We didn't hear the player, but it was one of the wide receivers. It was J.T. Smith. He clipped uh, Jarris White. Jarris was coming in, and he uh, he came in completely from the backside. So it is now second down and nine for Kansas City. 3.23 remaining in the first quarter. No score on a rainy afternoon. And that rain certainly will have an effect. It already has. Gant and McKnight are split behind Steve Fuller. He's going to pass on second and nine. Gets the time over the middle. Complete to Gant at the 30. 35, turns the corner to 40, and he is pushed out of bounds by Richard Wood. 
at about the 48-yard line. Oh, there's a penalty. That's a, that's a bad shot. He didn't know he was out of bounds. Richard went and gave him a shot right at the uh, lower portion of his chest, and they're going to they're gonna say it's a late hit, but uh, he didn't know the guy was out of bounds. He was still very active and very much at, at, at running at it. Well, again, it's on the Kansas City side of the field, and John McKay has talked about this a great deal, that they seem to call them on the uh, side of the bench. For example, if it would have been a Buccaneer call, if the Bucs had been offensively, the chances are it would have gone for the Buccaneers had it been on their side of the field. It's, it's a very, very judgmental call, and again, it was on the Kansas City side of the field. So we, uh, it will give Kansas City a uh, excellent field position now, first and 10 at the Tampa Bay 43-yard line. Personal foul, unnecessary roughness, number 34, defense. Yeah, that was Cedric. Uh, Richard Wood actually was the one that forced him out of bounds, but uh, Cedric didn't know it, and he just wanted to make sure, and he gave him a, a kind of a shot. He didn't go to his head. He just went to his upper part of his chest, and uh, they still threw the flag. First and 10, Buccaneer 44-yard line, 313 to go in the first quarter now. Wide receivers to either side. Buccaneers are blitzing, and Mark Putney comes in and hauls down. Ted McKnight, David Lewis also in on the stop. The Bucs had a safety blitz on that time, and they struck out that play a lot. So maybe a couple of yards. Brings up second down, a little over 11. So that fired up the defense after that first little foul penalty. And this crowd is fired up, and that's something uh, that is very, very good to see. And those of you with radios in the stands, we want to have you keep that uh, mood going, cheering all the way for this team. Both wide receivers are to the right side. And now the man in motion to the left is Marshall. Handoff goes Earl Gant. He's juking around, and he's not getting anywhere. No gain, perhaps a loss of a couple of yards. David Lewis and Cedric Brown on the stop. David Lewis stood that play up uh, very, very well. Didn't let Gant get outside, and Cedric Brown from his free safety spot came over to clean up, and uh, the intensity Cedric's really hitting. He's not known as a real tough hitter. He's a great center fielder, but he came in from, from center field and literally took Gant and uh, David Lewis, just, just threw him down to the ground, but uh, the intensity of that defense is really something. The Chiefs go with three wide receivers. Stan Rome comes in, and Curtis Jordan, the nickelback for Tampa Bay. It is third down 11 from the Buccaneer 45-yard line. In motion goes Ted McKnight. Dropping back deep is Steve Fuller. He looks, fires, intercepted. Picked off Richard Wood. He's up to the 40, 45, and to the 46-yard line. A big interception by the Batman, Richard Wood. And J.T. Smith made the tackle. 12-yard return that time by Richard Wood. And so, a timeout on the field with a minute 21 remaining here in the first quarter. No score, Tampa Bay and Kansas City. And, well, that's going to fire him up a little bit, Dave. Yeah, that's true. Richard Wood with excellent the position there. That's his second interception. He had uh, one for 24 earlier, so now he's got two for 36. We've got 121 to go in the first period, and uh, the Buck defense, I think, has been outstanding. They've allowed one first down that I recall. The other one was, was aided by the penalty, and uh, they're really hitting and stocking, putting a lot of pressure. They really haven't got close to Fuller yet at this time, but both the, the outside people, Leroy Selman, Wally Chambers, have been putting plenty of heat on, and that one just looked like it floated off his hand. Fuller's a fine young man, a, a, great, uh, a great college quarterback at Clemson, and... Uh, a, a super smart guy. You know, Levy is a, uh, uh, Marv Levy is a uh, Phi Beta Kappa. Uh, Steve Fuller was a 3.99 in, in college, and uh, he really enjoys that intelligence being around him. The uh, Chiefs have made a change at nose tackle. They have brought in their rookie seventh round draft choice, Ken Kramer, out of Ball State. My old alma mater. I mention that because there are not very many in the National Football League. No, that's for sure. But the ones who are in play very well, naturally. Uh, <laughs> the uh, good friend Jay Randolph is doing the, the game for the uh, for NBC today, and uh, Paul, McGu Paul McGuire says Paul State is his favorite school. <laughs> we won't go into it, but Paul McGuire is my old <laughs> teammate. We owned a saloon together in San Diego. He's half nuts. Back to the high first and ten from the Tampa Bay 46-yard line. Bucker and Hagens to either side. Hand off Ricky Bell, and he can't find much room at all. Art still made the uh, stop off the right side of the uh, Tampa Bay line. 
pick up of maybe a yard that time, and George Ragsdale comes in the game. Now, John McKay said earlier this week that George Ragsdale and Jerry Eckwood would play a great deal. It was probably a, a good anticipation that they would throw a lot to him, but now, of course, with the rain, we don't know. With the rain, I, I think we'll still put the ball, we'll still see the ball be put in the air a fair amount. I don't think you're going to see the, the long stuff because of the control factor, but I think the little dink stuff to the back, Eckwood and... Eckwood and uh, Ragsdale, we should see some of that. 45 seconds remaining first quarter, no score. In motion goes Larry Mucker to the left side now. Doug Williams pitches back right to Ricky Bell. He turns the corner, gets out. Penalty flag drops as Bell is forced out of bounds at about the 47-yard line. And George Ragsdale was kind of looking at the officials. I think Ike Hagan's uh, clip. Ike coming in from his uh, flanker spot. So we get a clipping penalty against Tampa Bay. One guy was kicking out on the man, and, and, and Hagen's come in and kicked in, clipped in, and uh, he was really high load. I think it was the uh, outside linebacker, Cal Peterson, to this side. Again, Calvin Peterson, a former Tampa Bay Buccaneer. Played pretty well when he was here, and he uh, signed on with Kansas City. Well, he, I think he went to the Rams uh, from, from here, and he was doing some acting stuff. Let's listen to Jerry Seaman. Personal foul. Clipping. Number eight. Offense. Still the call against Cy Kagans, and now it is, brings up a second down and 13 for the Buccaneers with 33 seconds to go here in the first quarter. No score, Tampa Bay and Kansas City. We'll keep you up to date on that Chicago-St. Louis game. It gets underway at 2 o'clock. Davis and Bell in the eye behind Doug Williams. Long count, handoff goes to Bell right up the middle, and he is brought down again, Art Still, on the tackle at the 35-yard line. Pick up on the play of about three, and it brings up third down and long. Maybe the last play of the quarter. Again, the no-shows this afternoon uh, doesn't look like a great deal because uh, this game is not being televised locally. It was not sold out uh, far enough in advance, so we don't expect the no-shows to be uh, that great here this afternoon. Plus, it is such an important game. And that's going to be the end of the first quarter here at Tampa Stadium with the score. Tampa Bay nothing, Kansas City nothing. Mark Champion and Dave Kasurik back with you at Tampa Stadium. We begin second quarter action. No score here at Tampa Stadium. A rainy afternoon. It is still raining. It's a light rain, but it is a constant rain. And the weatherman says and that will be the case all afternoon. Statistically, the Bucks with 67 yards rushing to Kansas City 2. Passing the Bucks 0, Kansas City 39. Not a lot of action. Very much hampered by the weather. So it is third down and 21 yards to go. The ball back at the Tampa Bay 35-yard line. Handoff goes to George Ragsdale. He's caught in the backfield and dropped. Art Still, the rookie out of Kentucky, number one draft choice, or second-year man, rather, out of Kentucky. And the loss is all the way back to the 30-yard line. So Still has been a big factor today defensively for Kansas City. Brings up fourth down and 26, and Tom Blanchard will come in to do the punting now. And with the rain, it's always going to be uh, a bit scary. J.T. Smith is the deep man back at the 40-yard line. We already mentioned he's had two returns this year for touchdowns. And now Dana Nassiger says we want a, a drier ball. So they blow the whistle, and they'll get a new football on. We're going to see a lot of that this afternoon. Just underway, second quarter, 14-21 remaining. No score, the Bucks and Chiefs. The Bucks had a good chance to score. They had the ball down at the 15-yard line of Kansas City. And then the field goal attempt, the uh, snap went right through Tom Blanchard's hands. And it uh, ended up with nothing. We're ready to go. Nassiger, good snap, good rush, and it's almost blocked. Blanchard, it was partially tipped. J.T. Smith, a fair catch of the 40. The referee says it was partially tipped. Therefore, no penalty. He called it immediately. The referee called it immediately. So it is a 30-yard punt that time by Tom Blanchard. And he nearly had it blocked. With the score, Tampa Bay nothing, Kansas City nothing. We'll be back. Steve Grogan has just hit Horace Ivory on a six-yard touchdown pass. So New England now leading Minnesota 7-6. to six. That game is in the first quarter at uh, New England. Baltimore 10 to nothing over the New York Giants. That's at the end of the first quarter at uh, East Rutherford. San Francisco 7, Atlanta 3. That's at the end of the first quarter. Nothing in on the Cleveland-Cincinnati game or the uh, Buffalo-Pittsburgh game. Both of those contests are in progress. On Saturday, in case you missed it, the Jets over Miami 27 to 24 and Green Bay 
finished with an 18 to 13 victory over Detroit. So the New York Jets finished the season at eight wins and eight losses. The Miami Dolphins, who have already clinched the AFC East, finish at 10 and six. Green Bay, with that victory over Detroit, ends its season at five and 11. And Detroit, with one of its worst records in the club's history, finishes at two wins and 14 losses. Gary Green was the man who nearly got in there to block that punt of Tom Blanchard, but luckily enough, he didn't do so. So Kansas City has good field position to begin their drive, first and 10 at their own 40-yard line, 14.02 remaining in the first half, and we have no score. The rating of scores, Mark, Baltimore's got a, a three more points, and they lead the Giants 10 to nothing in the first period. Minnesota trails New England 7 to 6 in the first period. San Francisco 7 to 3 over Atlanta, also in the first period. Had a couple of games played yesterday. Uh, Green Bay beat Detroit, and the New York Jets ended up 8 and 8 on the season as they beat Miami. Sound like Lou Michaels got a year extension on his contract. That's one of those uh, win the contract, keep the contract going. It is uh, really coming down now. The rain seems to be coming down a little bit harder. And it is uh, first and 10 for Kansas City at the 40-yard line. The Buccaneers defensively, Wally Chambers, Randy Crowder, and Leroy Selman across the line. David Lewis, Dewey Selman, Richard Wood, and Cecil Johnson are the linebackers. Jarris White and Danny Reese at the corners, and Cedric Brown, Mark Cotney are the safety. And the crowd is up in arms about something. I think a long time out. So the Chiefs break out of the huddle. J.T. Smith to the left side, and Henry Marshall lines up to the right side. Backler split, Ted McKnight, and Earl again. Play fake, Fuller has caught it. Leroy Selman has him at the 33-yard line. That'll be a sack. Leroy Selman grabbed him. And Cecil Johnson was in there just to make sure. So a loss is marked at the 34-yard line. They really marked it up a little bit, I thought. That is the 11th sack of the year for Leroy Selman, who, by the way, of course, is a member of the 1979 NFC Pro Bowl team, a starter at right defensive end. Incidentally, that's the 38th sack for the Bucs. They really haven't done much in the way of turnovers. That interception was the first one since Jarrett White intercepted against the New York Giants four weeks ago. Curtis Jordan, the nickel back on second and 15 from the 35-yard line. McKnight, the handoff, and Wally Chambers has him at the 35-yard line. Wally simply dove over his man and made the tackle. Brings up a third down and still about 15 yards to go. So the Buccaneers defensively are really doing a job. By the way, we'd like to welcome our listeners around the world who are listening to today's game over the American Forces Radio Network, which serves, serves over 300 stations in 20 countries around the world. So we're international. So you would, would you like me to say something in Polish or something? Uh, yeah. Why don't you give a little Polish? <laughs> Some of the Eastern European countries. Third and 14 from the Kansas City 36. Steve Fuller dropping deep to pass. Big rush. Gets away from it. And throw. The pass is overthrown, intended for Tony Samuels, the tight end at the Buccaneer 40-yard line. Again, the Buccaneer pass rush is better than we've ever seen it. Randy Crowder put on the big rush along with Wally Chambers. Yeah, those three guys, and there, there was no blitzing that time, and the uh, five blockers for the Chiefs plus the back could not keep them out. They were just pushing. Both of all, all three men were double teamed, and they still put enough pressure on Fuller to force them out of the pocket. Uh, again, very, very bad wet conditions. The ball just hit it to a very harmless season ground over the head of the receiver. Bob Thrupp to do the punting now. It's a high snap. But he's going to get it away, and he booms this one. Holy mackerel, Danny Reese all the way back at the 8-yard line. Takes it there to the 10, Danny to the 15, and up close to the 19-yard line. Bob Drupp really nailed that one. 57 yards on the punt by Bob Drupp, who came in today as the National Football League leading putter. So 12 minutes and 36 seconds remain here in the first half of play. Tampa Bay nothing, Kansas City nothing. Again, we will have live updates for you on the Chicago-St. Louis game from Soldier Field, where the, uh, the temperature, the wind chill factor, is minus 9. And that certainly could have as much a, a, an effect on that game as the rain is on this game. Speaking of the Bears, uh, George Hallis Jr., the president of that club, passed away today, and I think the Bears will really have something to play for on his in behalf of his memory. First and 10 at the 19-yard line for the Buccaneers. Equid and Bell in the backfield, and Ricky Bell gets the call across the 20 up to the 22-yard line. And the stop made by the middle of the Kansas City line. Art's still in there. He's made about every tackle this afternoon, it seems like, for Kansas City. He's one of 
the better defensive lineman of the National Football League and only in his second year. Morris Owens now coming in at flanker, and he replaces Larry Mucker. A lot of people thought that the key matchup was a big meet. Dar uh, Darryl Carl, not the right to offensive tackle, number 70 against Art Still, because Still is the is power in their defense, and Darryl Carlton's got to play good football. Second and seven, Tampa Bay 23-yard line. Morris Owens to the left, Ike Hagan split right. Bellin Eckwood in the backfield now. Hand off Jerry Eckwood across the 25, and he is driven back. And the tackle made by Mike Bell. Brings up a third down play now, third and about four. Larry Mucker comes back in, carries in the play now from John McKay. We've not seen the ball thrown in the air at all, or well, very much today, very seldom. And you're, the ones that are going to be put up are going to be very safe passes because it is raining, the ball is wet. Well, Fuller's completed a couple uh, of, of six and dug uh, 0 for 2 and uh, very, very strong on the ground so far. Third down and four. Buccaneer 25. In motion goes Larry Lucker to the right side now. Doug Williams to pass on third down. He's got protection. Unloads it complete to the 35. Flaking free to the 36-yard line goes Jerry Eckwood. And that's good enough for a Buccaneer first down. Out of the backfield, the kind of passes that uh, are high percentage passes, 11 yards on the completion. The market was a very slow, uh, slow-moving play. I saw Jerry Eckwood. I uh, happened to watch him. And he kind of check blocked and really didn't do much. And then just drifted along. He circled out of the backfield from the left-hand side and was, was just uh, not quite into the middle, but a little simple slip of the wrist by Doug Williams and uh, a good completion. Eck would come very near breaking loose for, for a long gainer of that play. Manu Maliuna on the tackle. First down, pitch back to Eckwood, and he is horse-collared about the 36-yard line by Sylvester Hicks, the right defensive end. Very little of any gain that time. Brings up second down at about 10 yards to go. 10-16 remaining in the half. We have no score from Tampa Stadium. Speaking of Manu Maliuna, uh, Jay Randolph was telling me when he did a Kansas City-Seattle game, he had his hands full with him. Right. Piazza Popo or whatever, that's one of your, <laughs> your favorites. Manu Tuiasa Topo or something like that. Made the all-rookie team. <laughs> that's a mouthful talking about both of those guys. Larry Mucker and Ike Hagan both line up to the left side now in second and ten. I think the rain has shifted. Uh, the wind is kind of blowing it in here. We're getting uh, bits and pieces of it. Mucker goes in motion to the right side. Play fake. Doug Williams just gets it away. And the receiver, Jerry Eckwood, slipped and fell down at the 45-yard line. The coaches are calling for some kind of penalty, but Jerry simply fell down. And Doug Williams nearly got waylaid. He was lucky to get the football away. And it brings up a third down and 10. As Kansas City brings on their pass prevent, Tim Collier comes in the game. Cal Peterson was coming from the left linebacker spot. And it's interesting to look at the statistics. The leading sacker for the defense is, is Whitney Paul. Whitney Paul just went on injured reserve with a broken arm. But he's the leading sacker with nine. And uh, so that indicates they do bring their backers a great deal. Yeah. Also brought in an extra down lineman. He is Don Parrish, who started a nose tackle. Third and ten from the Buccaneer 36-yard line. The back split. Rolling out to the right side is Doug Williams on the keeper. Design play. He's up to the 45. He's not going to get to the sixth. Second effort. He may have gotten it. Up to the 45-yard line. It looked like he was stopped about two yards short. And he simply splits out that six-foot four-inch frame, and he may have picked up the first down. The nose, be very close. The nose of the ball had to get just across the 45-yard line. And let's see if he got it. They will mark it down. It was a design rollout by Doug Williams, the bootleg. And we're going to take a look at the six as they are marked down. It looks like it is first down for the Buccaneers. Good second and third effort that time by Doug Williams as he picked it up on his own. First and ten out to the Tampa Bay 46-yard line. And we have 9.23 remaining in the first half, and the clock is running. Jimmy Giles was an excellent block that time, pinning Art still into the line of scrimmage, and uh, Doug uh, kind of left Greg Roberts, who was out in front of him, and allowed uh, Herb Christopher a chance to come in and make a tackle. But you mentioned he stretched his long six-foot-four-inch body and just got the nose of the ball past the first down stick. Two tight ends in, Obradovich and Giles, Morris Owens, the lone wide receiver, Johnny Davis and Ricky Bell in the backfield on first down. Handoff goes to Bell. He's hit right at the line of scrimmage and dropped by Art Still again. And Art is really 
winning the battle over Daryl Carlton right now. Brings up a second down and nine. 8.48 remaining here in the first half. No score. And the field continues to get soaked. But again, it is uh, a very, very good field as far as drainage is concerned. And it would be quite a while before we really saw a lot of squash out there. I remember the Atlanta Falcon game last year was like that, though. Second and nine from the Buccaneer 47-yard line. Wide receivers, Hagan and Mucker to either side now. Bell and Davis in the backfield. Doug Williams, the count. Hand off deep to Bell. He tries to get off the left side, and he is not going to make it. He is stopped. Tom Howard on the tackle, along with Gary Spady, the uh, inside right linebacker. And now the Buccaneers are faced with another third down long situation. And the Chiefs bring in their pass prevent defense now. Tim Collier comes on the field along with Don Parrish as they go to four down linemen. And Mike Bell comes in at right defensive end. The Bucs have made three out of six third down conversions, and that's, uh, again, a good, pretty good percentage. Uh, looks like uh, they, they detected something with the rush, and that's why Doug kept the ball last time on the third and long situation. Third and ten from the Buck 46. Eckwood and Bell are now the running backs. They are split behind Doug Williams. He's going to pass. He's getting good protection. Over the middle, out there is Jimmy Giles. It's intercepted by Tim Collier at the 25, across the 30, 40. Midfield, down to the 45, Collier to the 40, and he's all the way down to the Buccaneer 34-yard line. Big me, Darrell Carlson on the tackle. Double coverage on the tight end, Jimmy Giles, and Tim Collier merely stepped up, and I believe we got an injured player down. It looks like Darrell Carlson. Yeah, that would be uh, well, real would, trouble, and, and it looks it, like Revis is also limping. Dave Revis limping off the field. Boy, you lose those two guys, and you got real problems. Big Mead is laying down on the turf at about the 34-yard line. He is replacing Charlie Hanna, who's on injured reserve, would not be eligible until the NFC Championship game, should the Buccaneers make it that far. I think we'd see Darrell Austin uh, replace uh, Darrell at the right offensive tackle. So with the score, Tampa Bay nothing, Kansas City nothing. We'll be back. On the scoreboard of the National Football League in the second quarter, Stanbuck a one-yard run, so it's Atlanta 10, San Francisco 7. At New England, as we told you earlier, Grogan to Ivory for that six-yard touchdown pass. New England now leading by the score of 7-6. to six. That's at the end of the first quarter. In the first quarter, Brian Stipe to uh, Logan for a 33-yard touchdown pass. Cleveland out in front of Cincinnati, 6 to nothing. Bradshaw to Swan for a 20-yard touchdown pass. And Pittsburgh is leading Buffalo 7 to nothing. That's at the end of the first quarter. Also in the National Football League, getting underway in about 10 minutes or so, Philadelphia will be at Houston. St. Louis will be at Chicago. A very pivotal game as far as that uh, NFC Central Division race is concerned, as we have already explained. Later, Washington is at Dallas, and that game will be heard over many of the same AFRTS stations. New Orleans will be at Los Angeles, and Seattle at Oakland. Monday night, Denver is at San Diego. Darrell Carlton is up and off on the sideline under his own power, so that is good news, and we'll try to get the word. He's still standing up along the sidelines trying to shake it off. So we'll try to get the initial word for you on uh, Darrell Carlton and whether he'll be back in there. But Kansas City has excellent field position. First and ten at the Buccaneer 34-yard line. And this is the first big break of the game. It looks like Darrell took a shot on the right shoulder and maybe to the head when he went down on the turret. Henry Marshall to the left side. J.T. Smith is flank right. The running backs behind the rookie Steve Fuller are Earl Gant and Ted McKnight. On first down, Fuller, play fake. Over the middle. Danny Reese, nearly intercepted by Reese at the 18-yard line. The pass well overthrown, and it brings up second down and 10 for Kansas City. Seven fourteen remaining, second quarter. Ted McKnight comes off the field now. And Horace Belton out of southeast Louisiana in his second year, a free agent, played in the uh, Canadian Football League is on the field. Second and 10, 34-yard line. Steve Fuller to pass, getting pressure, swings it out to Gant. 35, 30, Gant down to the 25-yard line, very close to the first down. Leroy Salmon on the stop. Depending on where they mark it down, just inside the 25-yard line, that will make it a bit short of the first down. And it brings up third and about one. 
Bill Kohler comes on the field now for the Buccaneers, and he replaces Wally Chambers. So Bill Kohler is on, and he lines up there along with Randy Crowder and Leroy Selman. As Wally comes along the sidelines now, third down and about a yard, 6.33, the clock running. Inside is Henry Marshall. McKnight back in. McKnight gets the handoff and the first down. He breaks free, gets down to the 19-yard line. He got away from Cedric Brown, and Mark Cotney had to make the tackle, but it is a Kansas City first down all the way down to the Tampa Bay 18-yard line. Well, you know, Cedric didn't just try to stop him in the hole and didn't really put his arms around for a tackle. He instead lowered his shoulder, and uh, McKnight was able to bounce off and uh, necessitated Mark Cotney coming over to actually grab him and bring him down. Wally Chambers is now back in, and Bill Kohler coming out. Looks like he was just shaken up a little bit, but Wally's very much back in there. J.T. Smith back in at a wide receiver. Camp and Belton are now the running backs from first and ten from the 19-yard line. Camp and Belton are behind Steve Fuller. And off play fake, and Fuller goes down. They roll him down at the 24-yard line. David Lewis put on a tremendous pass rush that time as they shot the linebackers. And it's going to bring up second and long. Randy Crowder also with a good pressure. Second down at about 16 yards to go now for Kansas City. So that is a big first down play for that Buccaneer defense. Yeah, both, both they squeezed him, David, from the left side, and Randy, although he was a nose, nose man, he took a loop to the right-hand side, uh, to the left uh, offensive side, and they put equal pressure on, forcing him to go down. Curtis Jordan, the nickel back in there now, on second and 16 from the Buccaneers' 25-yard line, 5-16 remaining in the half. Steve Fuller inside handoff. Down to the 20, and to about the original line of scrimmage. Goes so Earl Gant, tackle made by Richard Wood. So it's going to bring up a third down at about 10 for Kansas City. Wouldn't it be nice if they come away with absolutely nothing? Earl Gant looks like quite a politician. He's in there picking up the, picking up the buck defensive man. He picked up Cedric. He picked up uh, Richard Wood. He must, uh, must want to be a nice guy about it. I, I, uh, you don't usually see too much of that. He's a rookie. Maybe that's the reason. Out of Missouri, a fifth round draft choice. Henry Marshall to the left. J.T. Smith. His flank to the right side, 437 on third down and eight from the 17. Four to pass. Out of the backfield again. He is hit. Gets away from one man, but not the other. Great play. David Lawrence on the initial contact. And then Danny Reese came in to finish it off. Randy Crowder also helping out. The ball is back at about the 22 yard line. Lots of five on that play. So it brings up fourth down, 13. And we're going to see one of the old men of this team, Jan Stinnerud, to attempt a field goal. And the field is really becoming kind of soggy now. There's some puddles out on the field in the middle. The holder is Steve Fuller, the quarterback, remember. It will be a 39-yard field goal attempt by Jan Stinnerud. Fuller, the holder. The snap is a good one. Stinnerud blocks. Oh, and it is not going to be the block field goal. Nothing doing. The Buccaneers will take over. And that fires up the crowd. Marked by Leroy Selman. Leroy Selman with the score. Tampa Bay nothing. Kansas City nothing. We'll be back to the Buccaneer Radio Network. You may have heard mentioned uh, on the Buccaneer uh, Network that Chicago Bears President George Hallis Jr. died. Now, we emphasize this is George Hallis Jr., the son of of uh, George Hallis Sr. But anyway, George Jr. dying of a heart attack at the age of 54. His uh, father is the owner of that uh, National Football League team, Chicago Bears. Hallis Jr. had a role in the Bears operation for 30 years, and he became president of the team in 1963, and that's the year the Bears won their last NFL championship. Hallis Jr. also was a member of the executive committee of the National Football League Management Council. So George Hallis Jr., dead of a heart attack at the age of 54. Two games of the National Football League on Saturday. The Green Bay Packers over the Detroit Lions 18-13 at Pontiac, Michigan with Tom Burney kicking four field goals and Eric Torkelson running uh, one yard for a touchdown to give the Packers an 18-13 season-ending victory over the Lions. Well, let's see if that fires up the offense. Daryl Carlton is back in there at right offensive tackle and that is good news. So he was just shaken up. 
Joey Eckwood and Ricky Bell will be in the backfield for Doug Williams. First and ten at the 22-yard line. Let's see if this Rainfield crowd can get fired up again for this offense and really get this team going. Buccaneers on their first offensive drive took the ball all the way down to the Kansas City 15 yard line and came away with nothing on a bad uh, handling of the snap on the field goal attempt. But Kansas City's field goal was blocked by Leroy Selman. First and 10 from the 22 yard line. Eckwood is in the slot. In motion goes Larry Mucker to the right side. Hand off Ricky Bell. He's got room to the left side. Can he turn the corner? Yes. 25 up to the 28 yard line goes Ricky Bell. Forced out by M.L. Carter. The right quarterback, 3.33 remaining here in the first half of play. It has been raining. Uh, it started about an hour before game time. It has not let up. Second down three, pick up a seven that time by Ricky Bell. He has 14 carries for 60 yards already. He needs 74 to reach 1,200 on the season. So he's 14 shy, and uh, 1,200 would be a great, uh, a great year for Ricky. Morris Owens hit a flanker. And the split at Ike Hagan, close to the left side now. Eckwood, again in a wing position to the left. Morris Owens goes in motion right side. Hand off up the middle to Ricky Bell, and he can't fight off Mike Bell. So the two bells ring each other at the 30-yard line. It's going to bring up third down and about two. The Buccaneers would like to get downfield, get something on the scoreboard going into the locker room at halftime. 3.15 and the clock running. You know, with weather like this, you want to get any kind of score at all, and uh, you don't exactly, if you get a touchdown or a field goal or something like this, you can't exactly sit on it, but very, uh, very often uh, one or two scores could hold up, and uh, just, just because it's so tough to get an offense going in, in this kind of stuff. So the Chiefs go with four down linemen. Manu Maliuta comes out of the game for Kansas City. It is third down and two from the 30-yard line. In motion out of the backfield goes Ricky Bell. The pitch goes to Jerry Eckwood. Cuts up five, 35, 40. He's got Royal Midfield. Eckwood in the pass the football. He fumbled the football and Kansas City has it. Jerry Eckwood, the ball simply fell out of his arms. And Kansas City's M.L. Carter, the right quarterback, makes the recovery. A huge hole, and Jerry Eckwood went all the way down to the Kansas City 28 yard line. And the ball simply came out of his arms. A 44-yard run. I don't believe anybody touched it. No, I think he had a blocker, uh, Jim Obradovich, if I'm not mistaken. And uh, Bradovich and he were rumping elbows. And he looked like he tried to change hands. The ball popped loose. And he simply lost the football. Boy, the Buccaneers continue to make crucial turnovers. We've had an interception. Now the fumble. And all are what appear to be good offensive drives for the Buccaneers. So they continue to make the kind of mistakes that have cost them football games the last three weeks. The defense has been really holding its own. They've been playing outstanding, but you just can't leave them out there forever, and you've got to give them a little blow. Uh, they do their job, and they like to sit down and take a rest, and all of a sudden uh, the ball's turned over. They've got to strap the hats back on and come on out and, and try and hold again and force uh, force the turnover or force the, the Chiefs to kick away to them. You know, John McKay has said about his defense that they have not scored off of big plays. They have not forced a big play where they have scored on an interception, a fumble recovery like Leroy Selman did earlier in the year. Earlier in the year, Mike Washington's uh, touchdown right. against Baltimore was a factor. This might be the kind of game where they really need that type of score. No doubt about it. Uh, I think they've, they've turned the ball over 11 times the last two weeks, and they haven't turned it over, but once uh, the, the defense hasn't turned it over, I don't think he meant it derogatory towards the defense, but they were getting the big plays. The, the Leroy Selman recovery for a fumble uh, uh, for a touchdown against Detroit, if I recall, and then Mike Washington, 49-yard interception for a touchdown. You've got to get that kind of stuff, Mark. You've got to get a block kick into the end zone. You've got to get an easy touchdown every so often because you just can't depend on slugging it out game after game after game. And maybe uh, maybe an easy touchdown, maybe a pickoff, uh, a, a bobble, uh, somebody takes it off the quarterback's hand or something, and, and that may be what it's going to take. It is first and 10, Kansas City at their own 28-yard line, 238 remaining here in the first half of play, no score. Five receivers, Marshall and Smith to either side. McKnight and Gant are the running backs. And off goes McKnight. And he's slipped up and dropped by Mark Cotney to strong safety. Excellent play by Mark Cotney. Great tackle, yards. Mark. That was just a super tackle by one of the fine tacklers in football, and uh, his, his support as a strong safety is outstanding. New England continues to lead Minnesota 7-6 to in the second period. Cleveland have the early lead. 
Pittsburgh 14 and nothing over Buffalo also in the second period. Second 11 from the Kansas City 27 yard line. We're going to get very close to the two minute warning now. 2.04 on the clock running. Steve Fuller in motion goes Henry Marshall. Handoff goes to Ted McKnight. He tries to turn the corner. He's flipping on the field. He's not going to get much of anything. Mark Cotney again on the stop. We are at the two minute warning. With the score, Tampa Bay nothing, Kansas City nothing. We'll be back. We told you about the Packers-Lions game and the fact that uh, Detroit finishes at 2-14. and 14. The one good bit of information out of that is that the Lions are absolutely assured of uh, the first uh, choice in next year's uh, college football draft. The other game played on Saturday, the New York Jets and the Miami Dolphins, and Bruce Harper caught a 72-yard touchdown pass from Richard Todd and then set up another touchdown with a 52-yard kickoff return to lead the New York Jets to a 27-24 victory over the Dolphins. That win is the Jets four straight, and it enables them to end the season at 8-8. Eight and eight. The Dolphins, who already had clinched the AFC Eastern title, will take a 10-6 record into the playoffs. The Dolphins appear to be driving for a winning touchdown or at least a game-tying field goal in the closing seconds, but quarterback Don Strzok fumbled inside the Jets' 10-yard line with 36 seconds left. Earlier, the Dolphins scored on a 20-yard pass from Strzok to rookie Tony Nathan, a 3-yard smash by Larry Zonka, a 1-yard plunge by backup fullback Bob Torrey, and a field goal. It is beginning to get a bit sloshy down there on the field. We noticed that on the last series by Kansas City. It is third and ten. The ball at the Kansas City 28-yard line. Curtis Jordan on the extra man now in the secondary for Tampa Bay, replacing Cecil Johnson. As we are down to a minute 55 in the first half, no score. And both teams have had a shot at a field goal. Kansas City's was blocked by Leroy Selman. The Buccaneers was uh, missed because they never got it off. It was a bad snap, or not the snap, but the ball was mishandled by Tom Blanchard. Mark, uh, we keep talking about the mishandling. It was also a little bit wide, so we'll give part of it to Blanchard and part of it to Steve Wilson for the snap. It was a little bit wide. Henry Marshall to the left, J.T. Smith to the right. Tight end Tony Samuels puts left now. Fuller hands off McKnight. He gets a beautiful tackle made at the 33 by Curtis Jordan. Saving a possible long gainer by Ted McKnight. Brings up a punting situation now. And the area that Bob Brepp will have to stand in as we look down is a bit wet. In fact, there's some water standing. And Danny Reese will be the deep man. There's a timeout called by the Buccaneers. Let's pause 15 seconds for station identification on the Bucks radio network. This is the American Forces Radio and Television Service. The Buccaneers called their first time out. They want to uh, save the clock and hopefully get down to at least uh, field goal range before this half ends. A minute 44 to go. It is fourth and six for Kansas City. Danny Reese standing back at his 15-yard line. Brett's last punt was 57 yards. He really nailed it his last time, but he's standing in a, in a sloshy area, <laughs> That's right. Uh, Reese, uh, Reese is a little more respect this time. Awaiting the snap now. Grupp keeps the towel in his hand and just crosses it away. Good snap. Grupp gets it away. Very high punt once again. Danny Reese over at the 20, takes it there. Turns inside of the 25 and goes down at the 27-yard line. That's where the Buccaneers take over. With a minute 33 remaining here in the first half, 46-yard punt and a seven-yard return by Danny Reese, who holds the National Football League record for most punt returns in a season. He broke that earlier this year, broke Eddie Brown's record. That was he's, now up, he's now up to 68. He started with 64. It's an ongoing record, and uh, our, our, we saluted him last uh, last week when he broke the record, but uh, not a lot of uh, NFL records uh, held by many of the Bucks, and certainly uh, Danny is the first record holder for the Bucks. Well, we noticed that. Jerry Eckwood remains in the backfield for the Buccaneers, which is always kind of nice. First and 10, 27-yard line. In motion goes Larry Mucker to the right side. Pitch left to Ricky Bell. Gets good blocking, but he's going to be hauled out of bounds by Gary Spanny, the inside right linebacker. I tell you, they, uh, they call a penalty on Cedric Brown earlier. Spanny uh, was tossing Ricky around there with about five yards out of bounds. Brings up a second down and nine. The clock stopped with a minute 23 remaining in the first half. Morris Owens in, replacing Larry Mucker. He'll carry in the play. 
from John McKay. The rain continues to fall, and it, uh, it is taking its toll on the field, good drainage or not. They're starting to get a little bit of standing water, particularly between the 40s, 45-yard uh, line, and between the hash marks. Mike Higgins to the left side, and Morris Owen flanks right. The back's in an eye, Bell and Eckwood. Doug Williams takes a deep drop. Screen pass set up beautifully. 30, 35, 40, and a first down for the Buccaneers. Jerry Eckwood on the screen pass up to the 44-yard line. And the Bucs are going to call for the timeout. Their second, Art still made the tackle. He was all the way down the field to make it. He has excellent speed. And with a minute 12 to go, the Bucs have called their second timeout. Doug Williams coming across to the sideline now. It is first and 10 at the Tampa Bay 44-yard line, so they still have a ways to go to get in field goal range. Jerry Eckwood also coming out uh, after a fine block. Uh, looks like uh, Ragsdale is, is, is getting some instructions going to go in, but Eckwood with a fine block on that, leading the way. Steve Wilson also. So it worked out beautifully. The Buccaneers have not used that screen pass uh, a great deal this year, but it, uh, it was used uh, effectively in the games that they have used it. Also, uh, the backs coming out of the out of the backfield have been very effective against San Francisco. Uh, Jerry Eckwood and George Ragsdale were very effective on those type of passes. Yeah, right at the end of the game, Ragsdale was, uh, or, or excuse me, Mike Ray was using them a great deal and uh, just showed what they were capable of doing if they are able to do it a little more often. Ragsdale in the wing position. In motion goes Morris Owens to the right now on first down at 10. Doug Williams dropping deep to pass. Swings it out to Jimmy Giles. The big tight end up to the line of scrimmage, and that's all. Art still again on the tackle. And a minute to one, and the clock continues to run. They'll probably go without a huddle. Doug Williams is asking whether he should take a timeout. McKay waves it off. They've got one timeout remaining. They're going to have a very quick huddle. they got enough time, 50, 50 seconds. Now they're bringing another player in. Johnny Davis quickly on the field, and they got to get somebody off. George Ragsdale is running off the field. Plenty of time, though, 18 seconds on the 32nd clock. Second and nine, 44-yard line. And off inside to Bell. Journal to the midfield, down to the 45-yard line. And that's going to be good enough for a first down. Art still again on the tackle. And a timeout with 29 seconds. 29 seconds remaining here in the first half. The Buccaneers have it first and 10 at the Kansas City 45-yard line. Well, they've got no timeouts remaining. 29 seconds. Ricky Bell with 75 yards. He has passed the 1,200 yards. He's got 1,201. And uh, uh, our hat off to Ricky Bell. A, a great, great season. And certainly, I know he wants to continue on into the playoffs. And uh, perhaps his strong running and pass catching and blocking is going to leave the Bucks there. Right now, Mark, with 29 seconds, you've got time for a lot of stuff. Certainly, you're going to have to use somewhat of your out-of-bounds type offense. You're going to have to use some short stuff. Uh, getting out of bounds, getting as much yardage as you can. I don't think he can throw any passes up the middle. If he does, he's got to literally have a, an additional play call. He's got to be able to go without a huddle of any kind, particularly if he does complete the pass. And as we look down on that field, it is really, really becoming a quagmire very, very quickly. A lot of standing water uh, in between the 20s. A lot of it. But so far, Doug has kept his footing. We haven't seen a lot of slipping going on, so the footing must be uh, pretty good. First and 10 at the Kansas City 45-yard line. Wide receivers to either side for Doug Williams. He looks left. Close one out, and it is out of bounds. A little too much on at that time, and it was ruled out of bounds. The pass was caught, and Ike Higgins is being pulled out from underneath the bench. He slid all the way, all the way underneath the team, the team bench that time. ML Carter was over there to uh, defend the play. Second down, 25 seconds to go. You know, it's funny when you have a situation like this, sometimes you get some muscle pulls because your your footing gives out from you, but generally you don't get hurt that in games like this because of the, the lack of velocity. Nobody's able to come up with full speed because of the bad footing. And you get a lot of sliding, a lot of slipping, but really not that intense hitting. Eckwood and Bell now in the backfield. On second down and 10, Kansas City 45-yard line. Sits back to Jerry Eckwood. He can't find anything, and they have... No timeout, so we may not get another play. They're going to have to hurry. Don Perry from the tackle. Kind of a strange call. Third down and about 10 yards to go. 12 seconds, 11. And they may not even have time to line up for a field goal, even if they get it off. They're not going to be able to. Williams floats one out. Out of bounds to Jennifer Hagan. Three seconds left on the clock. Well, now he's got a fourth down. He's going to have to... 
can't punt it, so he's just going to have to take a... Uh, well, Gordon Jones is coming in, so they're going to go for the old uh, bomb. Hail Mary. Hail Mary to the end zone. We've seen that a number of times this year. Well, since the rule has changed now, you can, you can legally tip the ball forward, sideways, or anything to another receiver. In the old days, if one receiver tipped it, another receiver couldn't touch the ball or catch the ball unless an intervening opponent touched it. But now they, they, they've changed it, and so you see an awful lot of this at the end of the game and the end of the second half. Gordon Jones, then a flanker. Dropping back is Doug Williams. There he goes. The Hail Mary. Down there is the tight end, Jimmy Giles. And it falls incomplete. And that's the end of the first half. Triple coverage on Giles. Actually, no other wide receiver got downfield. Giles was there all by himself. That's the end of the first half with a score. Tampa Bay nothing. Kansas City nothing. We are ready for third quarter action. And deep for the Buccaneers to receive is Ike Hagan. The kick by center route, line driver. Coming over for it is Danny Reese at the 10-yard line. Reese to the 20. Reese dives to the 29-yard line. And I want to tell you, that field is very, very wet. It is 7-0. The Chicago Bears are leading the St. Louis Cardinals in the first quarter. We will have some live updates for you a little bit later here in this quarter. And the Bucks come back out offensively. And we will uh, set it for you. Ricky Bell and Johnny Davis are the running backs. Jimmy Giles, the tight end. Mike Higgins is at one wide receiver. And the flanker is Larry Mucker. And it will be interesting to see what the offense is. Now racing on the field is Jim Obradovich. So they've suddenly decided to change plays here in midstream as Ike Higgins comes off the field now. So they stick with two tight ends. Bell and Davis, first and 10, 29-yard line, just underway, third quarter. Larry Mucker in motion to the right. And off Bell, up the middle, gets uh, three or four yards, up to about the 33-yard line. Tackle made by Don Parrish, the nose tackle. Defensively for Kansas City, starting this half, Art Still, Don Parrish, and Mike Bell on the defensive line. Cal Peterson, Frank Manumaliuna, Gary Spanny, and Tom Howard, the linebackers. Gary Green, M.L. Carter at the corners. Gary Barbaro, Herb Christopher are at the safety. And we notice that uh, we check the offensive line for the Buccaneers. Carlton, as we said, is still in there at right tackle for Tampa Bay. But at left tackle, we have Daryl Austin in place of Dave Revis. And off Ricky Bell, 35, up to about the 38-yard line. Or Jerry Eckwood, rather, I'm sorry. It's getting, getting tough to see the numbers down there. Mike Bell on the tackle. We were looking at the uh, at the left side. It is Daryl Austin at left tackle, replacing Dave Revis. And Again, one of the reasons Dave Hart still had a superb first half on that side of the field. Hart still was in at about every tackle. Of course, he is normally on Daryl Carlton's side, so uh, Dave Revis is out of there. We'll check and see if there is a reason for it and let you know. It is third and one from the 38-yard line. Bell and Eckwood in the backfield. Handoff goes to Ricky Bell this time. He tries to swing it out. He'll not do it. Jerry Green grabs him left cornerback, so that'll bring on the punting unit, and this is going to be a hold-your-breath moment. Tom Blanchard had one nearly blocked in the first half, and the field is in such horrible shape now. It's, it has to be a, just a perfect snap coming up here from Dana Mavsicker. The deep man is J.T. Smith. He's standing back at about the 30-yard uh, line, and the glare on the, off of the water, uh, the lights and the glare on the field, it is really kind of tough to see up here now. Blanchard standing back at about his own 20-yard line. Awaiting the snap from Dana Massiger. And it's a good snap. No pressure. Blanchard gets it away. It's a wobbler. Smith backing up to about the 25-yard line. Takes it there. Gets to the 30, and he is brought down hard by Danny Reese at the 34-yard line. So a punt of 38 yards that time by Tom Blanchard. And Kansas City goes on offense. Billy Cesar in there. So it's a score. Tampa Bay nothing. Kansas City nothing. We'll be back. Superstar O.J. Simpson has reached the end of the line. The man they call the Juice hanging him up after his San Francisco 49ers play the Atlanta Falcons in their NFL finale. And despite the fact he's gained more than 11,000 yards in his career, Simpson probably will only get a handful, if any at all, on Sunday. Knee problems over the past few seasons have robbed O.J. of the slashing moves and blazing speed that once made him the most dangerous running back in football. So instead of going out in glory, he'll be leaving as a reserve on a team that's currently 2-13. and 13. 
But even the injuries in the 49ers' mediocre showing can't dim O.J.'s achievements or equip some of his record-setting performances. It may be quite a while before anyone can touch him since 1973 record of gaining 2,000 yards in a season or his all-time high of six 200-yard games. And despite the uh, current group of good running backs, it could be some time before anyone else can win four rushing titles in five years, as Simpson did during the mid-1970s. Well, this may be a 40-day and 40-night routine. It is still coming down here at Tampa Stadium. And right after this uh, first offensive play, we're going to check in with Virgil Carter in Chicago to get an update on that Chicago-St. Louis game. The last score we gave you was 7-0 the Bears. It's first and 10 Kansas City, 34-yard line. Getty, Walters, Rudney, Condon, and Simmons on the offensive line. The tight end is Tony Samuels. In the backfield is Gant and McKnight. Steve Fuller at quarterback on first down. Hand off Earl Gant. David Lewis on the tackle. And absolutely nothing. Randy Crowder picked him up. So let's now, we're going to check in in Chicago with Virgil Carter and get an update on the Bears and St. Louis game. technical problems there, but it is 14 to nothing, the Chicago Bears out in front, and we'll try to see what happened there and uh, get things going. So it is second down and 10 now. Earl Gant limped off the field for Kansas City. Steve Fuller dropping back to pass. Plenty of protection, fires over the middle, complete. The ball is loose and intercepted. Richard Wood, and it intercepted his second of the day. The ball was tipped away off the fingertips of Henry or Tony Samuels. Good hard hit by Cedric Brown. It forced the ball loose, and Richard Wood had the concentration to pick it off. Well, that's his, that's his third, or third of the season, his second of the day. A very, very hard hit and a very alert Batman Wood hitting the ball. I don't know if, uh, if he had not, if it would have been a fumble, because uh, he might have had it long enough, but it's ruled an intercepted. Very, very alert by the Bucks specialty, your second uh, excuse me, defensive team, coming up with another big play. Mike Higgins and Larry Mucker both to the left side. Jim Obradovich is lined up to the right side. The lone running back is Ricky Bell. So they go with two tight ends. Handoff goes to Bell up the middle. Not very much to the 40-yard line. The uh, tackle made there by Frank Manumaliuna. It'll be amazing if I don't score that before the day's over. It's second down. And about seven. The ball at the Kansas City 40-yard line. The rain's still coming down, and the field is looks like a river. Morris Owens is in at flanker, replacing Larry Mucker. Seems okay. like it's getting a little more intense uh, talking about the rain. The field uh, is, is an absolute quagmire, but uh, the play is also extremely intense. Mark. Yep. The 11 8 remaining third quarter. No score. The Bucks in Kansas City. Ricky Bell, the lone running back once again. He gets the handoff off the right side, flipping his way, and he's brought down right... At about the line of scrimmage by Art Still, the left defensive end, who has had himself a great day. So it's going to bring up a third down play. You know, we watched Daryl Carl in that particular play, and Daryl looked like he had a hand on uh, Still's shoulder pad and, and really maintained pretty good position and, and, and still was powerful enough to string it out and throw Daryl off, but Carl made a pretty good block that play. Mucker and Hagans to the left side now. Again, Jimmo, or Jimmy Giles now lining up as a wide receiver to the right. Doug Williams rolling right to pass. Flip. Gets it away, and it is ruled. He may have been ruled down. I think they blew the whistle. Doug unloaded it, but I think the whistle had blown. Art still had him in his grasp. And I want to tell you, Art still is going through uh, Daryl Carlton like uh, like butter. Big Mead just can't hold him up very well. Well, it looked like a roll type, and it looked like Doug rolled right into the area where Big Mead was blocking. I don't know if Obradovich was supposed to block, supposed to block, but Jimmy Giles was very definitely in the clear from a wide receiver to the, he was put to the right, and he was wide open. Well, the punt. Here we go again. Tom Blanchard back at his own 40-yard line. They didn't have figure to do the snapping. And it's a high snap, but Blanchard will get it away. A wobbler. Going to go out of bounds. we got a penalty flag, I think, or do we? Yeah, yeah, penalty flag dropped, and it may well be a penalty roughing the kicker. David Lewis was patting uh, Gary Green, uh, the, the man who did it, and that's going to give the Bucks an automatic first down, and that could be one of the biggest breaks of this football game. 
It will give Tampa Bay an automatic first down. With 9.57 to go, third quarter, no score from a rain-soaked, and I do mean rain-soaked Tampa Stadium, but it's still coming down, and there's no indication it's ever going to let up. The other important game, 14 to nothing, Chicago leading St. Louis. We had some uh, technical problems in checking in with Virgil Carter. Don't know if we'll be able to get him on or not, but we'll certainly keep you up to date with the score at any rate. And Gary kind of uh, hit him. Gary was actually going for the ball and uh, couldn't hold up his momentum. He also got a block by David Lewis, but doesn't matter because he's got to maintain his own momentum. Number 24, he hurdled the blocker. First down. He hurdled the blocker, says Jerry Seaman. And that's the reason. First and 10 bucks at the Kansas City 40 yard line. That's where it all started. And the crowd is really getting fired up now. Larry Mucker to the right, Ike Higgins to the left. Bell and Eckwood. And Doug Williams loses the football. A penalty flag goes down, and all in all, it was a complete mess. Well, Jimmy Giles jumped uh, very, very quickly and prematurely, and uh, as soon as he jumped, the whistle blew. And it's a dead, dead ball. Doug Williams now is uh, going to get some rot, or a towel, rather. He's getting a towel from Frankie Papello. It brings up a first down and 15 now for the Buccaneers. 9.57 to go, third quarter. This could be one of those games, Dave, where uh, a field goal wins it. Well, that's true, and it's, it's a shame. Uh, we, we've mentioned it a couple times. We don't really want to harp on it, but a uh, little bit of a problem with the snap in the hole and uh, Neil O'Donohue's first kick, and O'Donohue tried to, uh, very, very uh, good play on his part, tried to scramble off to his left, came fairly near breaking it and, and coming up with a first down, but ran a little bit short. So it is first and 15. Bell and Eckwood are split. Morris Owens is in at a flanker. Two tight ends remain. And Owens goes in motion. Handoff goes to Jerry Eckwood. And he is nailed very, very hard by Gary Saney, the inside right linebacker, all the way back to the 48-yard line of Kansas City. Saney came in there absolutely untouched. Well, he must have slipped the gap because it looked like the play was going to be strung out, but uh, Staney had a full head of steam when he hit uh, when he hit Eckwood, and Eckwood really didn't have a chance. So, Mucker and Hagen's on the field now. It is second down and 18 as the Bucks are started out at the Kansas City 40-yard line, and now they are back eight yards. It is going to be tough to get anything going. Racing off the field is Jerry Eckwood. I think the Bucks have got all sorts of problems. Obradovich is now racing on, and Doug calls a timeout. Well, nobody knew what was happening. They called the play. Jerry Eckwood ran off the field. Jim Obradovich suddenly ran on the field. I don't think anyone knew what the heck the play was. Now we're going to try it again, are we? Okay, we're going to try to check in again in Chicago with Virgil Carter to get an update on the Bears in St. Louis. Virgil? like he was in Timbuktu somewhere instead of Chicago. So we'll again try to work on it and see if we can't uh, get it uh, fixed because the phone line is uh, not very good to Chicago. But uh, again, Virgil saying right now it's all Chicago Bears. And I don't think the Buccaneers were counting on anything differently anyway. It is second down and 18. The ball at the 48-yard line of Kansas City. As it continues to rain, the field is very, very wet. Standing water almost all over the place. Jim Obradovich is in, lined up as a wide receiver. Hagens and Mucker to the left side now. Ricky Bell, the lone running back. The pitch right to Ricky Bell. He gets it at midfield, cuts inside to the 45, and Ricky Bell still on his feet to the 43. The ball flips out of his hands and out of bounds. Don Parrish made the tackle. And it's going to bring up a third down at about 12 now for Tampa Bay. I'm sure you've been involved in, in games like this in your career in the uh, American Football League, Dave. What, what do you do offensively? Well, you've got to be fairly conservative. You've got to use basic stuff. In fact, I played in a game in Kansas City in the old stadium before Arrowhead, and we had six inches of rain in, in during the course of the game, and uh, the field was a lot worse than this. In fact, the players were up to their ankles uh, because of the crown there in Kansas City, but you just got to be fairly basic. However, uh, Lance always had a big day, and the winning the winning touchdown was scored on a reverse, so, so who knows? You talk about basic and then anything, anything happens. Any score is a good score in a game like today. Darrell Austin comes in at center now for Tampa Bay. Darrell Austin is in at center replacing Steve Wilson. Doug Williams, bootleg to the left. 
He's got room, 35, Dutch still to the seat, and he's forced out of bounds, short of the first down at the 36-yard line. Again, a good play, a bootleg. Gary Barbaro, the free safety, was over there to make the stop, and it brings up a fourth down. So, Tom Blanchard comes on the field again. 8.09 remaining, third quarter. We have no score. The Buccaneers in Kansas City. And what a, what a thing to happen to a game so important. You know, that was a fine play, but I think it could have been better if he had a, a pass-type option. There were no, no threats, no receivers in the area, and the defensive backs, when they noticed that uh, he was bootlegging, they automatically came up. They had no, no worry of, of a receiver, and I think it would have been more effective. Then a half figure gets the snap. Blanchard angles for the sideline, and he may have it. It is, let's see how they rule it. Touchback. They rule it at touchback. Very, very close. It's hard to say. Uh, the, we have absolutely no angle at all on it. A beautiful punt, though, by Tom Blanchard, but it just didn't quite hug the corner. And the Chiefs take over, first and 10 at the 20-yard line. For the score, Tampa Bay nothing, Kansas City nothing. We'll be back on the Buccaneer Radio Network. George Hallis, Jr., the president of the Chicago Bears of the National Football League, died Sunday of a heart attack at 54. A spokesman for the Bears says Hallis, the son of Bear founder George Hallis, Sr., suffered the fatal coronary at his home on the city's near north side. Hallis died only a few hours before the Bears were to vie for their first division championship in 16 years, playing traditional rival St. Louis at Soldier Field. The Pittsburgh Pirates say that all-pro linebacker Jack Ham will not play again this season because of an ankle injury he sustained in last Monday night's game at Houston. The Steelers say the team doctors made the decision Saturday. Besides missing all postseason games, Ham will also sit out the Pro Bowl game in Honolulu January 27th. He was chosen for the AFC team for the seventh straight season and is the only NFL linebacker to be named to the Pro Bowl each year since 1973. Okay, let's get back to rainy Tampa Stadium in Tampa Bay. Mark Champion, Dave Kasurik back with you at Tampa Stadium with eight minutes and two seconds remaining in the third quarter. No score. Kansas City has it first and ten at their own 20-yard line. At halftime, the Chiefs were held to 56 yards total offense, while the Bucks had 159. Uh, Ricky Bell was the leading ball carrier at halftime with 75 yards on 18 carries, so just not much offense at all in this game. Defensively for the Buccaneers, the same defense you've seen him there. Of course, Danny Reese starting in place of Mike Washington. For Kansas City, Mike Williams is in. The number eight draft choice of Ricky out of New Mexico, replacing Earl Gant, who was injured. So, McKnight and Williams are split behind Steve Fuller. It's back to Williams. Williams looking for room. Finds a little bit. Gets all the way out to the 29-yard line before Cedric Brown makes the stop. He fell off of uh, David Lewis that time and picked up an extra four or five yards. Lewis had a blocker in his hands and was unable to throw him loose, and, and all he was able to do was uh, throw a shoulder at him. He was not able to in any way grasp or, or try and tackle. We've received word that Steve Wilson has a groin injury and uh, should return, but that's the reason Darrell Austin is now snapping at the center position. The Chiefs have Forrest Felton uh, in the game, replacing Williams at running back, Forrest Felton, and he is in there along with Ted McKnight. Second down and one for the Kansas City 29. In motion is Henry Marshall. Hand off McKnight. He's punched up. Going to be very close to the first down. Randy Crowder, the initial hit. And they stop the clock with 7-11 remaining. By the way, this program is authorized under rights granted by the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and WDAE Radio solely for the entertainment of our audience. Any reproduction or the use of the descriptions and accounts of this game without the express written consent of the Tampa Bay Buccaneers and WDAE is prohibited. It is third down, by the way. The announcers are chosen in cooperation with the Bucs and WDAE. Third down and about a yard to go at the 29-yard line. Big play on this offensive series for Kansas City. McKnight and Williams, two tight ends in the game for Kansas City. In motion goes Henry Marshall, the handoff, and first down for Kansas City. Goes Ted McKnight, he bumped off Leroy Salmon and picked up the first down. So the Chiefs keep the football and keep it going. 6.36 remaining here in the third quarter. wishes to Mrs. Dewey Selman, Catherine, who, uh, again, as Dick Rippon mentioned at the top of the show, gave birth to a little girl, Shannon Nicole Selman. And congratulations to Dewey. The 
running backs are McKnight and Williams on first down and 10 at the 33-yard line of Kansas City. Pitch back goes to Williams. He slips, loses his footing, gets back up, and Richard Wood makes the tackle. Let's see where they mark it down. At about the, maybe short of the line of scrimmage, a loss of about a yard of the play. He was nearly still for about a three or four yard loss, but he was able to regain his footing. So that's an indication that it is getting very, very slippery out there. Second down and 12 now for Kansas City, 5.43 to go, third quarter. Incidentally, Mark, uh, that last first down they made was only their fourth, so they really have, uh, the defense has really bottled up Kansas City. The weather's had a big factor, but the defense is playing super. The backs are split behind the rookie from Clemson, Steve Fuller. He's going to try to pass, he's getting blitzed, and Mark Cotney's got him. He lost the football, but I believe the whistle had blown. The whistle had blown, it was a good call, he was down. Mark Cotney on the safety blitz, getting Steve Fuller all the way back to about the 20 yard line. Interesting on that play. Cotney uh, came up and faked and then he started to go back and uh, he started just as he, he timed it just about the time the ball was snapped and Fuller was watching David Lewis who was listening from the side that he was able. David Lewis was coming from the left side. Fuller was able to see him but he had no idea Cotney had a dead beat on him and it was another very, very key play by the defense. Mark Cotney on that tackle. Curtis Jordan on the nickel back. Horace Felton in the game along with Mike Williams. And off goes to Williams. He's caught, gets away from one man, and now is brought down by Jarris White at about the 23-yard line. Brings up a punting situation, so the pressure now reverses and goes to Bob Brook. Danny Reese is calling for some rise, and he's yelling to the sidelines, but after him, nobody's looking at him. And now he gets a towel from uh, one of the Buccaneer players on the sideline. Up, standing back, actually Bob standing in one of the drier portions of Tampa Stadium at the eight-yard line. Well, if it's dry, it's the only dry spot. Gets the snap, no pressure at all. He gets away, a good punt. Danny Reese awaits it at the 30-yard line, takes it there. 35, Danny to the 40, really cradling that football. And the Buccaneers take over, first and 10 at the 40-yard line. A 48-yard punt, 11-yard return. With 4.24 remaining here in the uh, third quarter. So a timeout with a score. Tampa Bay nothing, Kansas City nothing. At Chicago, Phipps to Williams on that 11-yard touchdown pass in the uh, first quarter. And at the end of the first quarter, Chicago leading St. Louis 14 to nothing. No other changes in any of the other games at the moment. Uh, San Francisco leading Atlanta 14 to 10 early in the third quarter. Baltimore 17, the Giants nothing early in the third quarter. Also early in the third period, Minnesota 13 to 7 over New England. Cleveland and Cincinnati tied at 6-6 in the third period, and Pittsburgh leading Buffalo 14 to nothing early in the third period. Philadelphia is at Houston. We've had nothing in on that game at the moment. Later, Washington is at Dallas, New Orleans at Los Angeles, and Seattle is playing at Oakland. And on Monday night, Denver plays at San Diego. Saturday in the National Football League, the Jets 24, Miami, uh, the Jets 27, Miami 24, the Jets 27, Miami 24, and Green Bay over Detroit on Saturday. Final score there, Green Bay 18, Detroit 13. Mark, Champ Mark Champion and Dave Kasurik back with you at Tampa Stadium. We have no score, four minutes and 24 seconds remaining in the third quarter. Interesting question comes up of what, what is this, or what if this game ends up in a nothing nothing tie and the Bears win? They have a 10 and 6 record. The Bucks will be 9 6 and 1. Well, it obviously goes to overtime, but uh, let's win the regulation game is over first. The backs in an eye, Davis and Bell on first down. And off deep to Ricky Bell. He fumbles the football. And he recovers it, I do believe. Ricky got the football back. At the 35 yard line, loss in the play. Manu Maliuna on the tackle. Boy, oh boy, that could have been a big play in this game, but luckily Ricky hung on. The ball simply just slipped out of his hand. And it's going to be a play like that, probably, that's going to decide this football game the way it's going. 3.55 and the clock running. Ricky Bell comes out, and Jerry Eckwood now comes on for the Buccaneers. Ike Hagan splits to the left side, and Larry Mucker is flanked right. On second and 13 from the Tampa Bay 37-yard line. Davis and Eckwood in an eye. And off Jerry Eckwood gets away from one man, but not the other, and he's brought down. Art still on the tackle. So the fans are booing, but really, it is just almost impossible to get anything going. It, it is a very risky thing to even think about throwing the football on a day like this. It's, it's going to have to be a game that is decided by turnovers. 
field position on a punt. And it's uh, just one of those things we have to put up with. Incidentally, the two plays that Steve Wilson was out briefly with the uh, full groin were the first two plays that he has missed since the Atlanta game in 1977. So Steve has been a bit of an iron man out there, and it's good to see him back in snapping at center. Running back this time is Ricky Bell. The wide receivers, Mucker and Hagens. Jimmy Giles is split out to the right side now on third down and 15. Doug Williams rolls right. He pulls one out long. It's overthrown. Maybe intercepted. It is. Intercepted by Herb Christopher and the Kansas City Chiefs have it at the 23-yard line. I don't know where he was throwing the football, to be honest with you. Although Giles, Mark Giles, first of all, went a kind of a very poor out and up move, but it's no big deal because it would have been a fourth down situation, and I think that's almost better than a punt. Uh, they were third and, and 15. Uh, it, I, I'd, I'd think I'd have dropped it instead of intercepting it, but it has the same effect as a punt, so it's, it's really no big deal. Giles uh, didn't make much of a move, and they were very worried deep. I think Doug has got to throw middle-sized stuff and not worry about the deep stuff. They seem to be giving them the medium passes and uh, not the deep stuff. Well, we're going to try it again, fans. We're, we're going to check in with Virgil Carter in Chicago and see if we got a phone line this time. Virgil? So it is uh, Chicago solidly out in front, Dave. Mark, uh, just one note from uh, statistician Jerry Provenzano. Uh, that was a 42-yard net, uh, the interception. And uh, when you figure that Blanchard has been kicking 34.6 average uh, and, and somewhat hazardous, I might add, uh, I think that was a, was a pretty good play. That was Duck's first pass in the second half. And uh, we've also been given a note that 8,502 no-shows, 72-126 tickets distributed, actual in-house, 63-624. Well, the rain, obviously, the factor there. First and 10, 23-yard line of Kansas City, Williams and McKnight, uh, the running backs behind Steve Fuller. Handoff goes to Williams, and he's caught by Leroy Selman and dropped across the 25-yard line. Pickup of maybe three yards on that play by Mike Williams, a rookie out of New Mexico, eighth-round draft choice. Kansas City lost their two top running backs, Arnold Morgato and Tony Reed. And more so than ever this year, Marv Levy has gotten away from that uh, wing T offense. One of the big reasons is he lost his two big backs. Well, he had a junk in early. It wasn't very successful with Mike Livingston running it. And he puts Fuller in, and I think, the second or third game. And they've been reasonably successful with this young man. Fuller to pass on second down, getting the protection. Close one out. It is complete to the tight end, Tony Samuels, but he is out of bounds at about the 28-yard line, pushed out there by Cedric Brown. Brings up a third down play, third and about five yards to go now for Kansas City. With a minute 54, the clock running in the third quarter. We have no score. Both teams had a chance at a field goal. The Buccaneers missing on, what a combination of a bad snap and a bad uh, handling of the snap. And Kansas City's center route field goal attempt was blocked by Leroy Selman. Forrest Belton now joins the backfield, replacing Ted McKnight. It will be Belton and Williams on third and six, 27-yard line for Steve Fuller in Kansas City. And he hands off Leroy Selman for Rao, Mike Williams. Richard Wood helps him out, and again the defense does its job. And they're going to get a good hand from this crowd, the rain crowd. Leroy Selman proving why he should be on the Pro Bowl and would have been there before had it not been for an injury. Danny Reese now dropping back to about the 23-yard line. Bob Krupp standing at about the 12th. Bob is getting a, a big advantage. He's standing in the dry part of the field, which is the south end zone. The south end zone area, the driest of anything. The snap is a good one. No pressure. Krupp it's a line drive spiral taken by Reese at the 28. Danny to the 30, cuts up to the 35, and he gets dropped there. So the Buccaneers take over. J.T. Smith on the tackle. First and 10, 35-yard line with 39 seconds to go in the quarter. 45-yard punt that time by the NFL's leading punter, Bob Drupp. So the Buccaneers take over offensively once again. They have not been able to uh, move the football. As Dave mentioned earlier, the, the short passes are going to have to 
come into play, I think, if they're going to get downfield. Well, he's completed. The ones he's completed, uh, Eckwood's caught a couple little swing passes and, and fairly successful. He's got to go back to that kind of stuff. Running backs are Davis and Bell behind Doug Williams. Steve Wilson, by the way, back in at center. And off Johnny Davis, off the left side, maybe a yard. He's corralled by Ken Kramer, the nose tackle. And Gary Spaney, the inside right linebacker. Mike Higgins, Jerry Eckwood now come on the field. With the play on second down and eight from the Tampa Bay 37-yard line. Johnny Davis comes out along with Jim Obradovich. So Eckwood and Bell now in for John McKay's Buccaneers. 13 seconds in the clock running. They might just about get this one uh, off just before the quarter. Second down and eight. In the slot left is Jerry Eckwood. Moving in motion, Larry Mucker to the right side now. Two seconds on the clock. The pitch left to Ricky Bell. Bell looking for the outside move. Gets it to the 40. Down the sidelines. They have picked up the first down. They rule him out of bounds at the 46-yard line. Looks to be enough for the first down. Good second effort by Ricky Bell. That is the end of the third quarter here at Tampa Stadium. With the score, Tampa Bay nothing, Kansas City nothing. The Buccaneers indeed got a first down and 10 at the 46-yard line at Tampa Bay. They just announced that 12-year-old Scott Underwood, a winner in the NFC uh, punt, pass, and kick competition, so he goes to the, uh, the biggie. to the Super Bowl, that's right. Incidentally, Ricky Bell with a great uh, second effort. However, he was aided by a fine block by the left tackle, big number 75, Dave Revis. Long Ricky for the last couple of yards that were able to get the uh, get the first down. On a play like that, they, they kind of negate the in interior people by quickly pitching to the back, and the defensive end in that particular play, Mike Bell, had no chance because the ball was already outside of him. Bell was already outside of him as soon as he caught the ball from the pitch from Williams. So that's what the, you, you try and negate certain things uh, as, as far as the defensive alignment. So here we go, the final 15 minutes perhaps. Eckwood in the slot right now. Bell the lone running back in the backfield at any rate. In motion is Morris Owen. Hand off deep to Ricky Bell off the left side. Finds a little room and gets near midfield. The tackle made by Thomas Howard. Pick up on the play of about four that time by Ricky as he is edging toward the 100-yard mark. As we have told you earlier, he has already gone past 1,200 yards of the season. He was edged out of the Pro Bowl dotting by Chuck Muncy of the New Orleans Saints. It's really a feeling that perhaps Ricky should have made the Pro Bowl but didn't. Second down and six right in midfield. 14-30 remaining in the football game. No score. The Buccaneers... Kansas City Chiefs, and we have had nothing but rain here all afternoon. In motion goes Larry Mucker. To the right side, Doug pitches left to Ricky Bell. He gets blocking and out of bounds at the 48. Tackle made again by Thomas Howard. So it's going to bring up a big third down play, third and about four. They try to spring it out, but Kansas City was over there to contain the play. So you hold your breath on those uh, pitches with the uh, ball being wet and the rain coming down. That's true. Ike Hagens came in and cracked on uh, Thomas Howard, but Howard is, is considerably larger than H Hagens, and he kind of slapped him off like you slap off a fly and was able to get into the pursuit and make the play. Uh, again, they negated the charge of, of Sylvester Hicks, the right defensive end that time. Jim Obradovich comes in. He's lining up as a wide receiver to the right side now, so the lone running back is Ricky Bell. Third and three, Kansas City 47-yard line. Doug Williams to pass. Getting protection, over the middle, shot, he's got it, 40, 35, Jimmy Giles to the 30-yard line, first down for the Buccaneers. Gary Green, the quarterback. Here's the pass we've been waiting on, 22 yards to Jimmy Giles, the tight end. And the rain is letting up a little bit here at Tampa Stadium. It's still coming down, but it is letting up somewhat. As Dizzy Dean used to say, Mark, it ain't pretty. It's just simple, and it's nice, and it's, it's, it's easy. It's very simple passing. Uh, that ball was not in the air more than four or five yards, and it comes up with a 22-yard gain. You don't have to put the ball in the air 20 or 30 yards. The gain's 20 or 30 yards. You get the ball in a, a five- or ten-yard pass, and you get a guy like Giles or Eckwood to break it, you got a good gainer. Gary Eckwood back in, replacing Obradovich. Morris Owens goes in motion to the left side now on first down. The pitch right to Ricky Bell. Takes the toss. Looking for room, and he is not going to get anything. That play was really strung out, and he may have lost the yard. Greg Horton tried to uh, throw the block for him, and Greg was filled to the turf by about four Kansas City players. in regulation time, and I think we have to start saying that. No score, Tampa Bay in Kansas City. Larry Mucker.
Walker and Ike Higgins both go to the left side now. Jerry Eckwood is in a flat position to the left. Walker goes in motion, second and 12 for the Kansas City 32. Inside handoff fell. He's trying to turn the corner. Does so, 30, 25, and down to the 21-yard line. Jerry Eckwood threw one heck of a block. Jerry Eckwood simply stood up. ML Carter, the right quarterback. And it is a first down for Tampa Bay. First and 10, Buccaneers. Right about the Kansas City 20-yard line. What a block, Jay, by Jerry Eckwood. It wasn't Emil Carter. It was Thomas Howard. They both, uh, Carter's 42, Howard is 52, and Carter's a little guy. Howard's a big guy, so it was a, it was a much better block than we thought. We thought he was blocking on a, a, a defensive back, and he was really blocking on a 235-pound linebacker. First and 10 at the 20-yard line. Both wide receivers to the left, and now Morris Owens goes in motion. And off, Bell straight ahead. He's caught and drops at the 19-yard line by Parrish, Don Parrish, the nose tackle. 12 minutes and 17 seconds to go in the football game. Tampa Bay nothing, Kansas City nothing. The Bucks have their best drive since their opening series in the football game when they got down to the Kansas City 15, and the field goal went awry. Larry Mucker now on with the play. Second down and eight at the Kansas City 18-yard line. The rain is letting up. It's still coming down, but it is a light rain. Bucker and Higgins to the left side. Jerry Eckwood is in the flat position. And now Bucker goes in motion right. Williams hands off inside to Ricky Bell. He moves down close to the 16-yard line. Pretty obvious what they're trying to set up here. Gary Spaney, the inside right linebacker, made the stop. They were, don't want to take any chance. Eckwood comes off, Jim Obradovich comes on, an extra tight end on third down and six from the Kansas City 16-yard line. The Buccaneers heading toward that north end zone. Wouldn't it be nice if they got into the end zone? 11-11 to go in the football game. Doug Williams, quick snap, can't find anybody. Now throws, complete or incomplete? Let's see. They rule it complete. They rule it complete to Jimmy Giles, the tight end at the nine-yard line. That is another first down for the Buccaneers. He waited a long, long time to throw the football, Dave. You're right, Mark. Uh, I think he wanted to throw it, and it didn't look like the receiver was ready. And he, then, he, then he decided against it. He took it down. It looked like he was going to run. Got a lot of pressure from Mark Still, who's been all over the field. And then he threw it underneath the, underneath the linebacker, Cal Peterson. Jimmy Giles coming up with a great catch. Giles has had an outstanding year, and he continues to catch very, very well in, in key situations. First and goal, nine-yard line, 10.57 to go. Eckwood and Bell in the eye position, and Larry Mucker goes in motion. Doug Williams pitches back to Jerry Eckwood. He finds room down to the five-yard line, and almost lost the football, but recovered it at the four. Jerry Barbaro on the tackle. Second down and goal from just inside the five-yard line. Well, the clock continues to go. We've got 10.40 in the fourth period, and Mark is talking about in regulation play, getting, again, excellent blocks. Ricky Bell, uh, Jerry Eckwood and Ricky Bell are changing off, blocking for each other, the other guy carrying the ball extremely well. But this is a very, very important drive for the Bucks. They've got to come out of here with something. Certainly a touchdown will look very, very strong at this particular point, but they've got to come out of here with at least three points. Second and goal. Eckwood is in the wing position to the right. Going in motion is Morris Owens. And off Ricky Bell, looking for room, and he's not going to find it. He is bottled up off the right side of the offensive line by about four Kansas City defenders. And now it is third down and goal from the five-yard line. Inside of 10 minutes, 9.56 from the clock running. Again, that Chicago score, Chicago 14 and nothing with five minutes to play in the, uh, in the first half. We're, we're tuning in periodically to Virgil Carter for updates, but uh, that's what we've been handed by Jerry Provenzano, and it looks like... Uh, well, there was a, uh, a Kansas City player slightly injured. I don't think they're going to take a uh, full time out here. It's pretty iffy, so we'll not break away uh, because we certainly don't want to miss anything here. Cal Peterson is the shaken up player. And so Jerry Blanton, a free agent out of Kentucky, comes on. Third down and goal to go from the four-yard line. 9.45 and the clock running. 
Big play of this series. In the slant left is Jerry Eckwood. In motion goes Larry Mucker to the right side. Doug Williams, draw play, Ricky Bell. And he'll not get in. Down to about the two-yard line. It was a good call. A good call. And now, on comes Neil O'Donoghue. Mark, this is going to be a, just about like an, an extra point, and it's uh, by no means automatic, but it's going to be uh, about the regular spot of the extra point. It's uh, positioned literally between the uh, between the goalposts at about the two-yard line. Neil's probably going to kick it just inside the, the ten-yard line, eight-and-a-half, nine-yard kick, 19-yard field goal attempt. Neil O'Donoghue. The rain has let up a great deal. Awaiting the snap from Steve Wilson. It is a low snap. The kick is up. Good! The Buccaneers lead it. Three to nothing. Neil O'Donoghue, 19-yard field goal with a score. Tampa Bay three. Hands to City nothing. We'll be back after this word. Jack Thompson has scored in a five-yard run for Cincinnati. So in the third period, Cincinnati now leading Cleveland by the score of 13 to 6. Also, it's Pittsburgh 21, Buffalo nothing. That's late in the third quarter at Pittsburgh. Minnesota 16, New England 7 in the third period at New England. Late in the third period at uh, East Rutherford, New York, it's the Colts 24, the Giants 7. San Francisco leading Atlanta 21 to 17. That's late in the third period at Atlanta. Chicago 14 to nothing over St. Louis early in the second quarter at Chicago. Philadelphia and Houston nothing in yet. Now there's a very good possibility that that game has been changed from a two o'clock Eastern time start to a four o'clock Eastern time start. But uh, we don't know on that. We haven't heard anything. We should have at least have had a first period score at this time, but we have nothing in, so there's the possibility that the Philadelphia-Houston game has been changed to a 4 o'clock Eastern time start. 63-yard drive in 13 plays. It took 7 minutes and 9 seconds. A 19-yard field goal by Neil O'Donoghue to make it 3 to nothing. The snap was nearly lost that time, and uh, Tom Blanchard did a good job to get it down for Neil O'Donoghue. The deep man is Johnny Durden. Kansas City, 8.50 to go in the football game. The rain is very, very light now. So whether that's an advantage for Kansas City, it may well be. It may give Fuller a chance to throw the football. The snap was a, it hit the ground first, and Tom did a heck of a job in recovering it. O'Donoghue, in and over in, and a deep one. Gurdon chasing it, goes to his hands. It'll be brought out to the 20-yard line. Up over, and his Neil fired up. He, and that adrenaline is really flowing. <laughs> One big blue star for Neil O'Donoghue. He'll make it a green star for the uh, the Irish Shamrock, but uh, Neil is really pumped up. Uh, the snap was bad, and Neil adjusted. He, he didn't. He looked like he was hitting a little chip wedge. He, instead of taking a full swing as he normally would because of the timing, he just popped it up real quickly because he thought there'd be some rush, and uh, it was right through the middle, right through the heart. Defensively, Bill Kohler, a left defensive end, replacing Wally Chambers. First and 10, 20 yard line for Kansas City. Knight and Williams are behind Steve Fuller. On first down. In motion goes Henry Marshall. Play fake. Fuller to pass on first down. He is caught and gets away. They throw it. Almost intercepted. Well, I was waiting on the whistle to blow. Normally they do. Jarrett White nearly intercepted. But Steve Fuller was able to keep his momentum going ahead. I think that's why they did not blow the whistle. Because they almost caught him from uh, behind. Leroy Selman. Had it not been for a good last-second block by Rod Walters that kept him away, he would have really put the, the hip on Steve Fuller. Second and 10, 8.38 to go in the football game, 3 nothing Tampa Bay. Williams and McKnight are behind the quarterback, Steve Fuller. He's passing on second down. Looking, fires, incomplete. Looked like he was trying to get it to his running back, Mike Williams, but Richard Wood was right there. Well, they were complaining. Fuller went over to the referee and, and was really complaining because it looked like Richard Wood might have hit him, but he, he's in the blocking position at that particular point. Richard Wood banged him real good, but he's in the backfield, and it's, uh, it's perfectly legal. Curtis Jordan on replacing Cecil Johnson. It was a good call. Third down and 10 for the 20. The crowd yelling defense. Some 64,000 here this afternoon. And the Buccaneers, Wally Chambers, back in there now, replacing Bill Kohler. Third and 10, 8.33 to go in the game, 3-0, Tampa Bay. 
wide receivers to either side now. Steve Fuller takes the deep drop, getting good protection. Double pump, gets away from one man. Now he's going to have to run it. He goes down, short of the first down at 25. Excellent coverage downfield by the Buccaneers secondary. And Wally Chambers getting up slowly, limping. He's the guy who forced the play. Yeah, he, he just literally took that deep offensive tackle. Yeah, Bob Simmons is playing for injured uh, Jim Nicholson, and he took him right in the back. He jumped over at the last second and really forced Fuller out of the pocket. Fuller stumbling, not really able to gain his, his, his composure or his, his footing, and uh, he fell well short, bringing up a punting situation. 7.53 on the clock running, and it's fourth down. The snap to Gruff. He's going to get it away. It's a low liner. It's a wobbler. Hits it midfield. Danny Reed picks it up at the 40 and dives forward to the 44-yard line. And that's where the Buccaneers take over. Excellent field position with 7.42 to go. 35-yard punt and a four-yard return by Danny Reed. The score, Tampa Bay 3, Kansas City nothing on the Buccaneer Radio Network. At the end of the third quarter, Minnesota leading New England by the score of 16 to 7. That's at the end of the third period. In college basketball on Saturday and uh, throughout the week, let's do this. Let's take a look and see how the top-ranked teams did over the past week. Number one, Indiana beat Georgetown by seven points, but lost to Kentucky by nine points. Kentucky beating the top-ranked Hoosiers 69 to 58. Duke beat Pennsylvania 70 to 57. Third-ranked Ohio State beat West Virginia, Cal Poly Pomona, and Holy Cross. Fourth-ranked Notre Dame beat UCLA and St. Joseph's of Indiana. Fifth-ranked Kentucky beat South Carolina, Kansas, and Indiana. Sixth-ranked UCLA lost to Notre Dame and lost to DePaul. Seventh-ranked LSU beat Maine. Eighth-ranked North Carolina beat Detroit. Ninth-ranked Purdue beat Nebraska. And tenth-ranked DePaul beat Texas, Northern Illinois, and UCLA. Motion, Larry Mucker to the right side. The handoff goes to Bell. Bell to the 45. Ricky scoops his way to midfield, and he slithers along the field to the 49-yard line. Thomas Howard, the right linebacker. Good first down pickup by Ricky Bell to midfield. A gain on the play of about six yards. 7.23, the clock running. Tampa Bay, three. Kansas City, nothing on the 19-yard field goal by Neil O'Donoghue. Johnny Davis in the lineup now, replacing Ricky Bell. Bell gets a breather over 100 yards once again. The Bears are leading uh, day, what, 21 nothing now. Yeah, with uh, almost a minute and a half left to go, Walter Payton has scored, so now they lead 21 to nothing over, over St. Louis. The Bucks remain with two tight ends, Obradovich and Giles. Davis and Eckwood in the backfield now. Hand off Jerry Eckwood, and he is hit by Don Parrish for those tackles at the 49-yard line. And now the Buccaneers are faced with a third down three. As the clock continues to run. By the way, again, we mentioned it earlier, but today's game is being broadcast over the American Forces Radio Network. People are listening to the Bucs game around the world, from Europe to Alaska and the Aleutian Islands. We thank you for listening to the Buccaneers wherever you are in the world. And season's greetings from the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. And, of course, we at the Buccaneer Radio Network. Bell back in. Bell and Eckwood. He's got to be excited about this game. 6.19 to go. Third and three. Just across midfield into Kansas City territory at the 49. Larry Mucker in motion right side. Pitch left to Jerry Eckwood. Let's see if he can get the big first down. He's fighting off tacklers. He's got to be short. Really fought off. Let's see. We may have had a flag drop. We did. I think we might have had a face mask. We got a flag. Uh, this, one, this one is on the Buccaneer side of the field. <laughs> well, they were like some of the Buck people were signaling face masks. It is. And that will give the Buccaneers a first down. It may have been against Gary Green. Gary Green may have been the guilty party. And that will give the Bucs a first down with 5.56 to go in this game. They mark it off five yards. It is not a uh, the blatant face mask. Mark you, Mark, you were very uh, very right what you were saying on the sidelines because that official had a lot of help from uh, several players and some coaches and equipment people, trainers, everybody on the Bucs sideline pointed it out. And... Uh, the, the field judge in this particular side threw the flag. It was uh, He was not as close. He was a little deeper than, than the normal man, the, the line judge, the head linesman, and still he threw it. But he did get a lot of help from the players on the side. In fact, several Buck players came out onto the field, and I thought they may be penalized for that. Looks like, uh, well, we've got a some yeah. type of a timeout situation here, and the officials are over. We may, they're talking about, I believe, the players coming out onto the field. 
Or is it the, the official's microphone not working? I'm not sure what the problem is. Uh, is the officials have called the timeout to uh, discuss something. I think the official's mic is not working. We are it's hard to really tell what they're talking about. We have 5.56 remaining in the football game. And the, uh, the penalty was called against 59, Gary Spaney, the uh, right linebacker, right inside linebacker for Kansas City. But it was a big, big penalty. May well be the biggest of the year for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers. That's true, Mark. Uh, you know, it's very important. I don't blame the officials for trying to get this mic situation straightened out because this could be, a, you know, this, this is getting down to the last six minutes of the play, and they want to make sure everything's functioning. If, if there's a questionable call, they want to be, be able to make sure they can explain it properly. You recall when we played in Minnesota earlier in the season, the, the official was the only source of time uh, that, that we had, and uh, very important that he get that thing working, so that's what he was uh, stopping the clock for. First and 10, Kansas City 44 yard line for the Buccaneers. Bell and Davis in the backfield now. In motion goes Larry Mucker. And the handoff goes to Ricky Bell, and he shoots up to about the 40 yard line, maybe inside to the 39. Spaney the tackle. Second down, five yards to go now for Tampa Bay. The rain very, very light now here at Tampa Stadium. Ricky Bell is. Uh, 125 yards and 35 carries, and uh, he's uh, he's having an outstanding day. He's past the 1,200 mark coming into the game at uh, 1126. He's at 1251, and uh, very, very instrumental in this very time-consuming ground attack that the Bucs have mounted this quarter. Second down, about five yards to go for the Buccaneers. The backs are split. Bell and Davis in motion goes Morris Owen. Hand off, Ricky Bell, a sure handoff, and he is not going to get much. Down to the 39-yard line, tackle made by Calvin Peterson, who was back in there and left outside linebacker, the former Buccaneer. Third down, and still about five yards to go. The rain is just about stopped now. The field has soaked up a, a little bit. Still very soggy in between the 30s. But there's not a lot of standing water left, which no, is, is, is indicative of the fine uh, groundskeeping they have here. And uh, they do an excellent job, the Tampa Sports Authority, and uh, they, they keep this field in great shape. 4.40, the clock running. The Bucks lead it 3-0, third down, and about five yards to go from the Kansas City 38-yard line. Big play. Handoff rolling left. Doug Williams for the keeper. Cuts up side, and he is very close. Very close to the first down at the 33-yard line. Another bootleg play by Doug Williams, about the third one we've seen today. First down, Tampa Bay. Christopher, the strong safety, made the stop. Boy, I'll tell you what, Doug Williams may have thrown a couple of interceptions today, but he has been a big man on those rollouts. That's true. I, I'm sure they spotted something in the in the defense of, of Kansas City because they've been fairly vulnerable on that. They must be charging down or chasing quite a bit because he's, he's run that play three times. He's gained 20 yards so far and a, a couple key first downs, and Doug's running has been a big factor keeping a couple drives going. 3.50, and the clock is running here. First and 10, Kansas City 33-yard line. The Bucks heading toward the north end zone. Let's hope they get there. Davis and Bell. Hand off. Ricky Bell finds some opening. Gets to the 30 and down to the 29. Gary Barbaro, the free safety on the tackle. It is second down and six yards to go with 317 and the clock running. Mark, I, I noticed Doug is really watching the 30-second clock. It's now down to 20, and the Bucks are shuttling a lot of people in, but he's taking maximum time. That play went off with two seconds to go on that, and he's got to use it up. He's got 10. He's got to get him to the huddle fairly fast now. Now it's 11 and, and counting. Johnny Davis limps off the field, so Jerry Eckwood back in on second down and six. Eckwood and Bell are behind Doug Williams. He's using up every second. Another bootleg. He's to the 25. Doug down to the 23-yard line. Close to another first down. I think he may have it. Well, I'll tell you, he did something that was extremely wise. He went down and stayed in bounds. He could have he could have got out of bounds and, and stayed a little wear and tear on his body, Mark. But he went down, staying in bounds, bringing up a measurement. Uh, it's going to be very, very close, but the clock is going to continue as soon as this timeout is, is, is over for the measurement. Another bootleg play by Doug Williams, 2.33. And as Dave said, the clock will start again, and the measurement, he is short by inches. Just short. Looked to be 
be very, very close. So the Buccaneers will run another play, and as soon as they place the ball down, the clock should start running. And then they could probably run it down to the two-minute warning. There's 2.33 to play, and uh, the clock will start as soon as, as soon as the chains get back. Second down and inches to go. Or rather, third down and inches to go. Third down and inches. Third down and inches for Tampa Bay. 2.31 and the clock is now running. Now he's keeping him in the huddle. He says, let's stay here. Let's keep an eye on the 30-second clock. They're all looking around and they're looking at both ends. Got plenty of time. The 30-second clock is down to 16 and counting. I wouldn't be surprised to see Doug go with a quarterback sneak, although they do have four defensive linemen. Davis is back in along with Ricky Bell. Johnny Davis comes back on. Third down and just Doug keeps it. Pulls his way ahead and he only had to get about a about a half a foot, so let's see if they give him the forward momentum. If they do, he should have it. The clock is stopped, 2.04 to go. Two minutes, four seconds here in the football game. Let's see where they place it down. We may have another measurement. Let's see. First down. The Buccaneers pick up the first down, and that'll take it down to the two-minute warning. They should start the clock here, and that should bring it down to the two-minute warning. Well, that offensive line just wedged. Steve Wilson in the middle, naturally. Greg Horton, the left guard. Greg Roberts, the right guard. They formed a wedge, and Doug just went behind them. With the score, Tampa Bay 3, Kansas City nothing. We'll be back after this word. Don Calhoun has scored on a two-yard run, so in the fourth quarter, Minnesota's lead over New England has been cut to just two points. It's the Minnesota 16, New England 14. Walter Payton has scored his second touchdown of the afternoon for the Chicago Bears. This one a five-yard romp. He scored earlier on a one-yard run. And it's Chicago 21, St. Louis nothing. That game is in the second quarter at Chicago. At the end of the third quarter, Pittsburgh 21, Buffalo nothing. So to review for you, Pittsburgh 21 to nothing over Buffalo after three. Also after three periods, Cincinnati 13, Cleveland 6. In the fourth quarter, Minnesota 16, New England 14. Baltimore leading the Giants in the fourth quarter, 24 to 7. San Francisco leading Atlanta in the fourth quarter, 21 to 17. In the second quarter, Chicago 21 to nothing over the St. Louis Cardinals. Later, Washington is at Dallas, New Orleans at Los Angeles, and Seattle at Oakland. Champion Dave Kasurik back with you at Tampa Stadium. We are down to the final two minutes. Two minutes. Stand in the way of the Buccaneers being the NFC Central Division champions. They lead on the foot of Neil O'Donoghue, a 19-yard field goal. And it's 3-0. The Buccaneers have it. First and 10 at the 22. Regardless of what happens in this game, our co-most valuable player award winners, the Bad Buck Award winners, are Doug Williams and Richard Wood. The Batman with two big interceptions, and Doug Williams, who has done a job of those bootleg plays, and he just picked up another crucial first down. And now Tony Davis is coming on the field for the Bucks. Tony Davis. And coming off the field is now Johnny Davis. The winner of the trip to the Super Bowl, the uh, name the mascot winner, Captain Crush, is Jim Humbaugh of Bradenton Beach, Florida. So he's the winner of the Super Bowl trip via Eastern Airlines. And travel accommodations by Tiny Tiger Travel. First and 10, 22 yard line, Tony Davis in along with Ricky Bell. They are split behind Doug Williams. In motion goes Larry Mucker to the right side. And the handoff goes to Ricky Bell inside the 20, down to the 16-yard line. For the minute 54, Kansas City may have called a timeout. The clock has been stopped. Johnny Davis now coming back on. Tony Davis from his uh, ba blocking back with a fine block that time, kicking out, allowing Ricky Bell an opportunity to come on in. Doug Williams is coming over to John McKay and Bill Nelson for the uh, little offensive discussion, but uh, they're going to be very basic. Well, a minute 54 remaining here in the football game as the uh, timeout was called there. The Buccaneers leading it three to nothing. You can feel, Dave, the electricity beginning to build in this rain-soaked crowd. And they are all anxiously awaiting 
They would love a minute 54 to suddenly just disappear from the clock. That's right, Mark, and it's just been a tribute to the Tampa fans throughout the entire season because this is, I don't think there's a dry rear end in the stadium. Uh, my mind's kind of dry, but Dave Green sat in my seat at halftime, and it, <laughs> it also got very wet. But I don't think anybody out in that stadium has a dry spot on their body, and, and I don't think many people have left it. The water was cascading down the stands, and it's just been raining and miserable. It's gotten windy and cool, and nobody's left, and I, I think it's just a tribute to this town. This, this fine team, uh, they had uh, been struggling three straight weeks. They should have should have put it away and couldn't and didn't, but uh, everybody showed up. Uh, the no-shows were, were more than, than I thought, uh, particularly in lieu of the fact that the game would not be telecast, but the weather was just horrendous, and it, it's been that way much of the game. Looks like a light mist is still going. The field is, is dried out slightly, but it, it's still difficult. But again, uh, uh, really my hat is off to this super Tampa fan group. Uh, it, it's unbelievable. Tampa Bay area. Central Florida, Central Western Florida has just been sensational in the support. Every every league game has been sold out. I agree, and especially today, they really came to the occasion. Second down and four, 16 yard line. Mucker flanks wide to the right, two tight ends. The running backs are Jerry Eckwood and Ricky Bell. Eckwood and Bell in the backfield now. On second down, handoff goes to the big man, Ricky Bell. He's caught, gets away from one man, dives forward to about the line of scrimmage, and Kansas City signals for another timeout. With a score, Tampa Bay 3, Kansas City nothing on the Buccaneer Radio Network. With the first third of the season in the record books, the National Hockey League shows a slight jump in attendance, but much of that can be attributed to the four new franchises that came into the National Hockey League from the WHA. All four of the old World Hockey Association teams have shown increases in attendance, including a leap of better than 4,800 fans at a game in Edmonton and almost 4,000 in contest in Winnipeg. All are playing at or near capacity. In contrast, several older teams have suffered reversals at the box office. The biggest losers, the Boston Bruins and the Atlanta Flames. Despite having one of the top teams in hockey, the Bruins are down almost 1,400 fans a game. And the Flames, who are struggling at uh, about a 500 clip, have lost almost 1,700 per contest. Success on the ice has helped a couple of franchises. The Minnesota North Stars, this year's surprise team, up about 3,500 a game. And the Los Angeles Kings, strong early uh, showing there. And that's boosted attendance there by nearly 1,600 a game. Third down and four, Jerry Eckwood off the right side. He's going to get down to the 15, to the 10, and first down for the Buccaneers at the nine-yard line. Good second effort by Jerry Eckwood, and the Chiefs have but one timeout. I don't know, Jimmy Giles came up with the ball. I do not know if Eckwood fumbled or not, but uh, 120 and counting, and now the clock has been stopped. Kansas City's final timeout. A timeout with a score, Tampa Bay three, Kansas City nothing. We'll be back. Grogan has just hit Jackson with a 41-yard touchdown pass, and New England and Minnesota trading off the lead almost every time they score. It's now New England 21, Minnesota 16. That game is midway through the fourth quarter, and it's being contested at uh, New England. In college basketball tournament action, at the uh, Bull City Holiday Classic Championship game, Fayetteville State over St. Augustine's 95-77. In the Cougar Classic Championship, BYU 108, LaSalle 106 in triple overtime. Third place to Santa, Clara, uh, Santa Barbara, University of California, Santa Barbara 66-61 over Texas A&M. In the Fighting Illini Classic, Illinois winning the championship 47-40 over Illinois State. Third place to Eastern Illinois 65-59 over Kentucky State. In the Golden Gate Invitational Championship, San Francisco 68, Oklahoma 61. Third place to Utah, 82 to 73 over Pacific. Players at the Kansas City nine yard line. Joey Eckwood in the backfield along with Johnny Davis. Two tight ends, in motion, Laurie Mucker. No more timeouts for Kansas City. Doug simply goes down with it. The quarterback keeper to about the eight yard line. A minute 16 and the clock running. Remember, Kansas City has no more timeouts and the Buccaneers have three more plays. So this football game, a minute seven, a minute six to go, and I'll tell you what, this crowd is beginning to sense it. The Buccaneers, 58 seconds away from the playoffs. Here we go. The, the players are really whooping it up on the sidelines. This is quite a sight to see. A bunch of kids down there, they deserve it. 
Doug Williams with 40 seconds to go in the football game. Second and goal. Doug Williams, a long signal count. He goes down. That might do it. 31 seconds. 30 seconds. That's it. Buc the Buccaneers are the NFC Central Division champions. And we are popping the champagne. The Buccaneers have won the NFC Central Division title with an exciting 3-0 win over the Kansas City Chiefs here at Tampa Stadium. They battled the elements. They battled the rain all day long. And the Buccaneers are Central Division champions. They go to the playoffs. They go to the playoffs. That is it. But Tampa Stadium, we hope you enjoyed it because your Buccaneers are now the NFC Central Division champions. 3 to nothing over Kansas City. And it was an 18-yard field goal by Neil O'Donohue. And that's what did it for the Tampa Bay Buccaneers.